Big E, welcome to the Decently and Decent podcast, man. I appreciate you coming on for a little bit. Dude, an honor. An abs- I'm, I'm privileged. I, I'm blessed to be here. We were we were yucking it up a little bit before I hit record. We were just getting into that uh, the meme of like how everyone starts creating or anyone that starts creating content, they're like overly worried about production. And it's like the second you you make a little bit of money, you want to get like the best everything. And it couldn't be any farther from the actual necessary way of making content. It's like a polar but, opposite. And it's funny because I so I'm I'm I feel like a lot of a lot of people I talk to are the same, like you, One Peg, Eli from from Unsubscribe. Mm-hmm. Like we're all kind of like gear nerds. Yeah, I feel it's just that's something. It's something I love the production side of things. I love, but when it comes to content, there there's definitely an element of production that can heighten it. But a lot of people just focus on production and not actually on the content. And it's like that's well, that's not going to do anything for. Well, me. a lot of people have like the delusional take that the production equals the success of content. Yeah, it's, kind of, yeah, it's like super it. counterintuitive. Like, yeah, I mean, if you uh, PewDiePie XQC, like yeah. there's a hundred million examples that I'm, would to, that would preach the exact opposite. I, of that. I, I like, mean, have you not seen any of the guru uh, faceless? I own fifteen faceless YouTube channels, and I'm making a million dollars a month lately on Twitter. You seen any of those guys, dude? It, uh, of course I have. So I actually, <laughs> I'm in a, I'm in a large group chat with one of them. I'm not going to drop them. I'm not going to, because he's part, he was part of, are you familiar with the Omnia Media shit show where uh, like the network basically going under and is not paying people, Mudahar and, and I've Coffee heard of it. I've fit, heard huh? of it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my network. And I went through several months of not getting paid whole nightmare oh, wow. to get into now. But one of the dudes who's in like, I essentially started a group chat and tried to get everyone who was not getting paid by these fucking thieves to come in so we could kind of talk like what's going on. Yeah. Are they responding to you? Or are they not? And one of the dudes in it is one of these faceless YouTube channel dudes. And I'm like, I kind of, you know, I always respect the hustle. I do. But the other side of me is just like, I don't know that, that you see that not even on YouTube only, but like TikTok, Instagram, Instagram it's all about it's like everywhere. AI generated faceless content. And it's like, if you're not making these, like, like every other day I see a tweet on like money Twitter where it's like, here's <laughs> yep. an easy way yep. to make 5k a month minimum online. And that's in my three thing. Months. And that's what I don't Drives get is they don't, they don't need to do that. That's like, I understand that. And like, you know, Instagram business guru world, you know, the Andrew Tate wannabes on TikTok. They're trying to get yeah. you to go sign up and be a part of their scheme. But right. the reality is no, none of these guys need a yap. It's it's almost like I have a theory that the reason why they yap so much on social media is because they did make faceless content and that sense of narcissism that a lot of us creators have inherently at some level. Like you, you, we have to ha- have a reason to want to be on a camera. Like, let's just be honest. We got to like yeah. ourselves to some extent. I feel like, because they are faceless, they bypass that. And I think they use other social medias to leverage the yell of like, look what I'm doing, even though you don't know I'm doing it because I'm well, faceless. There is an element of once you, if you are able to make a little bit of money doing that, that can build confidence. And oh, yeah. for people that might not have the confidence to begin with, to try to make content with their face. And it's not to say that that's the, the correct route for everybody. Certainly, no. there's a lot of very good content that doesn't require and it's not a person's bad. face, depending on what it is. Not no, bad. correct, yeah. but I do agree. Like, I think sometimes these guys get good and they make it, and then they're like, uh, either A, I could make even more money by yapping and maybe sell a course mm-hmm. on how to do it, which one of the guy that I, ah. guy I was talking about, he also he has, I think he has a, they have like a, 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 a an X group, and I'm sure there's some sort of paywall somewhere. Oh, to be part of I, I didn't know to that. Te- to teach other people how to do it. Never right? dove into it. I just genuinely thought they were just like, look at all this free information I'm giving. I've never actually clicked their profiles. I've just been... I seen one, and you know how the algorithm is now. Once you click that one thing, Threads, it's just yeah. yeah, it's it's down your throat. Yeah, so like every other tweet is just a thread of like, here's nine like twenty things I knew, uh, twenty <laughs> things I know at thirty five. I wish I knew at twenty five yeah. about losing body fat. It's like it's a, that's thir- a super a thirty seven tweet thread. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the the. Um, the, these are, uh, I started doing faceless channels and these are the top 20 niches that I could generate five figures a month yes. in. Yeah. 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 I do, you know, again, like I respect the hustle. I love people that are hungry to make mm-hmm. money online, but like when it comes to content that like you're, you're, you're just, the singular goal is making money. Like for, for a lot of these people, there are people 
faceless is is a bit broad. Like there's a lot of people that make fantastic content that don't show their face, like whether it's narrative driven, story driven, they're telling stories, whatever. Yeah. The editing's great, obviously, like Sunny V2 type of stuff. Like, oh, you yeah. You really see his face. It just shit looks really good. But there's other people under that umbrella who are just trying to spam the highest volume delegated content using AI, using, you know, f- f- Filipino VAs. And it's just like, it, it, and the only goal is to try and find a way to wiggle their way into the algorithm to occasionally get a hit with high volume kind of nonsense that has no personality and they're just kind of trend jacking and all this stuff simply mm-hmm. to make money, which from a content perspective, like stinks, like it's not whatever. But again, like if you're somebody like who's smart and spends time learning these things, like, wouldn't you rather do that than, you know, work at target? Oh, bingo. You know? So, so I always like, as much as I hate it, I kind of understand why people do it. Yeah. But it is, it is just making, I think it is saturating the landscape even more. So it makes it more difficult for people making really great content, I think, to find the surface. Um, I th- I but think that's it's, just the nature of the job. Uh, yeah, and I think it's just going to be one of those... It's hard to call it a trend because obviously not everybody's yeah, hopping not, on it, but I, yeah. I really do think it's going to be one of those things that it's almost like a game update. I feel like it's just going to get patched. I feel like the algorithm is going to absorb a lot of that stuff. Well, uh, have you heard about what Instagram's going to be doing? With there? I think they probably already are. I, I haven't. Go ahead, because I had something I wanted to tack onto that. But what's what IG doing? So uh, the, the CEO apparently recently announced that Instagram is going to, I don't know if it's through AI or whatever their system is. I, well, I'm sure it's all funded by Zuck. So I'm sure they got some pretty good yeah. technology some there. Some sort of AI. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically going to scrub all media, and it's going to start... If you take a video of mine for virality, which is a very common thing, a lot of these faceless channels are doing, and repost it to their page to garner millions of views too, the new update is supposed to give all the credit to the original poster and not the new page. Yeah, it's supposed to. So you share a clip of, of mine that on my channel has a million views. You get 10 million. Those 10 million go to me now. It's almost like what they're doing on Twitter with like the whole... Now you can repost. Well, it's been like that for a while where you can repost a video on your phone. The video, but it'll have yeah. their name under it yep. and we'll aggregate the yep. views to them as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's weird because there's so many levels to it. Because like I said, like Faceless is very broad because like there's people that make really great, well-researched scripted content. Oh, yeah. But then there is these channels that are like, they're just taking little bits and pieces of other content like a lot of these mindset motivations here, huge on Instagram. Oh my God. Where they're just taking podcast clips, they're taking beautiful landscape clips, they're just pulling all these clips and then doing voice to text over some like, you know, five ways to become, you know, the next David Goggins. And most of it's just stolen content repurposed in like a new package. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, yeah, it's tough it's like cheap. where that line is. Like, yeah, it, it is. It's, it's cheap, it's easy. And then, you know, the, I think that the difficult part with that type of thing, especially when you try to police it, is who's judge and jury on what's transformative and what's not. I mean, for Christ's sake, in my, in my genre of content commentary that I've been doing for, you know, six, seven, eight years now, that's always been the thing is like, you, you know, I for, for a lot of the things I do, I'm using other content to create my own through comedic criticism. Right. Um, in a way that's hopefully transformative, which it generally is. I try to make sure that it is. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty so well articulated. Like, yeah, that's the gray area, I guess, where, and it helps for me where it's like, I'm showing my face. I'm like the personality on the channel. Like, it's pretty obvious when people come to see, they're there to see me. And it's like, I'm talking about something as opposed to people that are just uploading, like re-uploading a video with like a little minor tweak that barely changes the packaging of the you're, video. You're so good at your job that typically people actually get educated on situations and scenarios because of you not i don't go to your channel to find police cam uh, footage that i've heard of already i yeah. click your channel and watch your uploads because you're about to present to me something new and fresh just so where like what a lot of people that you're talking From about a different perspective bingo right? yeah. and a lot of the yeah. people that you're talking about the those in-depth faceless channels that are just constantly regurgitating stuff they're already taking the likeness of what a lot of us already know and they're just combining it and their own music and their own flow for their own narrative for 10 to 20 minutes just to get revenue half the stuff is things that we already know but it's like this aha oh okay i didn't hear it i didn't hear david goggins 
speak over, like you said, like the waterfall this time. I only heard this on Joe Rogan 15 <laughs> other times before, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's over a beautiful landscape, yep. so it hits different. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. It's emotional. Oh, yeah. You got a guy crying in the background. It's it's poetic now. And then yeah. you, you got that. There's like one of three kind of like inspirational instrumental songs that you just hear in your sleep because every time you fucking log on to social Dude. media, they're in the background of these videos. Every single time. I mean, it's good. It's yeah. good to point out like, yeah, you, you look how many large faceless creators that we know that have been around for 10 years in gaming. Like they've yeah, used true. games to articulate like everybody goes there for them and not necessarily the game. But like you said, that's a whole different arena of articulated videos they're telling a story usually with them and their friends a scenario situation they're not necessarily mm -hmm. just like there's faceless gaming channels now but it's all around like regurgitating all the information that other info channels you know put out right it's not a personality driven yeah. gaming channel so yeah like a lot of the faceless gamers that would like bk that are huge and i feel like the, the game was just a vehicle for them to showcase their personality and that's what what people were there for and that's how they grew these massive audiences um which is the i guess the separator so yeah they'll it'll always be around i mean con the content yeah. game's funny because it's always it's always a lot of the same with a lot of new techniques to try and capture market share yeah. um and, and and algorithms are changing every day and more people it's becoming more competitive every day it's it's very interesting i mean there's no no job i'd rather have but certainly the most stressful job i've ever had oh, at the dude. same time but like dude. But exactly it's, it's the fucking it's that's the that's best. been that's been the journey for me you know talking to you at at the uh the texas event you know yep it's it's such a a tough grasp to get to those new levels and scale and break through those phases. Cause most of us started this on a whim on a, like a fun video for a goof, you know, and then it turns into sure. something and then you have to analyze it and be mature <laughs> about it. And you don't get to trial and error as much anymore. Once you get to those new levels, well, you know? if it becomes a business or a way you're putting bread on the table. It's a whole nother game at that point, you know? Oh Yeah which I've talked about that a lot. I'll get back into that. I do want to just ask, you know, ask real quickly, yeah. strictly now that we're, you know, 10, 15 minutes in for those yeah. listening, those of you watching, God bless. You're beautiful. You're handsome. Thank you for being here. Um, <laughs> this is uh biggie um, friend of mine. We knew each other not super well, just through X. And then in mm -hmm. the last Texas uh, gun range event, we were able to link up and spend some time together, get to know each other a little better. Had a great time. Uh, he came and Good watched time. me hit some balls at Top Golf, and then you know we were Dude, shooting guns. And I still stuff. haven't gone. I need to go. <laughs> you still haven't gone golfing since. Yeah, I need to go. I need to start that way. Next time we meet, I can actually rip a couple. Best Always thing go. I ever did. Most yeah. fun hobby I've ever had. But for those listening that, that that might not know who you are, how how do you how would you describe yourself and what you do? Man, a, I, I would hate to be asked that question. It, so I'm sorry yeah, for it, it is, and it's it's it's. I feel like it's always maybe uh, you know. Uh, I'm thinking overthinking myself too much when people ask that question, but I feel like it's always sure. tougher for me because I try so much, you know, yes. but uh, I, I feel like the, the only way is just, uh, you know, the guy in the cameras. Like, I feel like that's the, the number one way that most people correlate. I just like, you know, tech media, uh, creating content, seeing what the internet's about, making a brand. It's very hard to categorize myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would agree just as a spectator of your content. I think you're good at, you like, you know, from from my point of view, if I may, you yeah. know, uh, you, I see a lot of videos from you that are little skits in the mm -hmm. in the in the vein of, you know, talking back and forth as you're playing two different characters like X versus Y talking about certain things that are popular in the moment, um, little opinions that are kind of funny but poignant around mm -hmm. trending tech things and trending stuff around. You talk a lot about stuff going on in the streaming community. You say social media. Twitch. Yep. Social media, a lot of stuff going on in the creator space, um, which is which is excellent. But I think you know, I saw I saw a tweet from you recently as well, where you know, and I, I go through this too, where there's after a certain period of time. I mean, when you do this type of thing, you you have to, you don't have to, but a lot of people end up trying a lot of different verticals, Bingo. a lot of different styles, a lot of different formats because you don't. A, you might not know necessarily what your strengths are. Um, B, you're getting repetitions to try and get better at all of the levels of 
content creation from from production to scripting to editing to all of these things. And then there's a weird moment where something might catch on and do really well and you have to decide you know, and like that can be an interesting crossroads because now you obviously want to replicate that and continue to do that but at the same the same time that might not be the thing that you're even that good at or that you like or are oh, passionate yeah. about so you have to kind of constantly be wrestling with this um you know this push and pull of d doing what you think you should do because that's what can help you grow and make this a living doing what you like to do or want to do um, because it's fulfilling or it's scratching that creative itch Bingo. and yeah. then everything in between. And then the other layer to that, which I struggle with sometimes is like, do I even know what the fuck I like doing? Dude, I'm not, <laughs> literally I'm not the sure fucking do, journey of a honest. creator and, and especially <laughs> yeah. more so the ones that like, you know, we had the conversations uh, at the Texas event about when you're even more in, to creating, you know, when, when you get yeah. more into the tech side of things, you get more into the, wow, I can, I could do this with the camera. Well, I was inspired by X, Y, and Z. Yeah. That makes it tougher because like, it's, you know, there's always a window of everybody's like fantasy of like, God, I would just love to take over storytelling and be the next Casey Neistat because that's inspiring. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be the next like Peter McKinnon because sure. he's just so good at, you know, creating other creators. And that's an, inspirational thing and it's usually because they've inspired us so we feel the need and want to do it ourselves but sure. yeah dude you're so right um and yeah that's like lately that's been my whole thing is i feel like as a creator you know obviously i'm not to the level of you and where you are to where it appears that you're more fine-tuned but that's the thing with being a creator you just never know what's going on with you and where you actually want to start bringing your brand and what you actually want to start doing but yeah, I, yeah, you know, recently I've I've had uh, a sit down with a couple bigger creators too, and just talking with a lot of people, and it's like, it's just so clearly evident what the forte is, the skits, the tech, that conversation, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think as creators, sometimes we just think we have to be improving because maybe it's what got us to where we were at one point, and yeah. sometimes it's just about hunkering and da hunkering down and just becoming better at your craft at the specific craft that you're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. It's very seasonal. I don't like what I've mm -hmm. learned now in being in this game for a decade plus, you know, I've been fortunate enough to do it full time now for six plus years where um, it, you know, there were times where it was like, I'm hunkered down, I'm working, I'm burning the candle at both ends, I'm growing it. And God willing, if that hard hard work pays off in some vertical or you find this thing that works, you you know, it makes sense to double down on that and ride for that sure. hard for a while. But there does come a point, whether it's out of necessity or out of trend burn or whatever, or or personal burn, where it's like you can't expect that in this type of business, you can't expect that thing to 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 go on forever. So there's Ooh there's always these tough decisions that need to be made because it's like, all right, here's this thing that, you know, here's this thing that's maybe the main bread and butter for my business model, but I need, like, you got to diversify. You, you got to find ways to not strictly, not just from a business standpoint, but from a, from a creative standpoint too. And I, you know, I've, I spoke about this before on this podcast, but for me, um, there's an interesting progression, I think that happens to a lot of people, uh, in more specifically in kind of the YouTube IG short form content space, uh, I think, you know, less so it, it's actually, it's affected a lot of industries, but where it's so competitive now and so much content is coming out at all the time. It's, you know, the idea of just hunkering down and spending a lot of time in like weeks, months on one piece of content, like feels impossible like there's very few people that especially can that. in vertical especially because it's in, just so fast uh, and, and uh, spe yeah in vertical no chance like in long form definitely i mean you obviously there's like 
you know, Hollywood, like the way we've traditionally consumed entertainment has just continually been chopped down into shorter, shorter, shorter form to the point where over the last two decades, even Hollywood has completely transformed and like movies that were awesome and unbelievably written and poignant and beautiful in the 90s can't even be made anymore because they won't even yep. get a nod because yep. people's attention is just so much different. So as someone who makes content, there's that constant pressure to uh, like once it's your business, like you just always have to be thinking about the next thing. The second something goes up, it's the next video it's volume it's like that and and in my experience in doing that over the last you know six seven years weekly videos sometimes more than starting the second channel where i do videos there like you can you can it's easy to spread yourself thin and then on top of that you throw on the fact that you're wearing all of the hats of a business owner yeah uh, a ceo accountant administrator all these things and i find there's kind of this um inverse correlation between creativity and success of your business. We're like the more, su the more successful you, you are on a business standpoint, the less time you have to feed and give yourself the breathing room to tap into that creativity that really inspired you to start doing this in the first place. Yep. So that's something that I've really wrestled with in the last couple of years myself is just like having this creative itch, this part of me that I, you know, I look back six, seven years ago that was like, it was, that's what I was leaning on because I wasn't making any money. I was trying shit. I was doing stuff. And then the flip side of that is now I have this business that requires X, Y, Z for me every week and I'm stretched thin and I have a family and I'm raising a kid and all these things. And it's like, man, to f even find an hour to play guitar again, like right now is bad. Oh. So really been tough. There. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's been, I've kind of been in this the last, I would say three to four weeks in this weird, this weird lull mode where and even if you look at the main channel, I've only uploaded twice on the main channel this month, today being one of those two times because I've just, I've been so unin uninspired and unmotivated to, to just do the hamster wheel stuff and just really, I've been playing like guitar for two hours a day. I've been Good. like writing, yeah. I've been doing skits, just like, and that's when I, when I talk about like seasonality, that's really what I think about. Like, I think is somebody who, when you have a creative side of you and and it's maybe being neglected, eventually you're going to have to pump the brakes on whatever it is that's taking all of your time and start to feed, you know, and that's kind of that phase I'm in right now. And I hope that spawns something cool. Like, you know, you, I never probably know what's going to come from that. Yeah. that. But you have to give yourself room to breathe to find yeah. that creativity because there's if you don't give yourself that time and that boredom and that just like sitting around not being worried about the next thing you have to post – you're just, you're, it's never, it's just going to sit in there and never come out. And I, and I think you do it. I think you like the way you just explained it. Cause it, it's just so interesting how, I, by the way, I'm a big believer of uh, what is it called? Like quantum theory, how like the world sure. would bring you uh, along at the right time to hear certain conversations or, you know, meet that person at the right time and you, it clicks and resonates. So hearing yep. you explain that one, it's, it's nice because when you go through that, you're like, fuck man, am I just bad at what I do? Or am I just a dumbass <laughs> for not appreciating this? And, you know, cause at the end of the day, we do have our dream jobs. You know what I mean? We're blessed never, to be where I'll we are. deny that. Yeah. And, but I think the way that you just articulated that is the best <laughs> way that most creators, including myself, like what I should have done. And a lot of those scenarios over the last few years as like my main source, YouTube grew uh, to certain levels. I like how you said you slow down on the main channel, still sticking with the curated content. Maybe it's not what you want to pump out twice a week right now, but you're still doing the same stuff, not ruining that audience. And you're yeah. having fun more on the sites that we know and articulate we can throw away shit on. Twitter, mm -hmm. TikTok, Instagram. Hey, if it yeah. low performs, it doesn't matter. Nobody gives a shit, right? That's right. And for me... So I don't know if you've seen recent posts. I literally just cleared 1,100 videos off my channel to, uh, Ooh, this week. 1,100? Here's the reality. That was oh, that uh, that was three quarters of my channel's uploads that accumulated to 6% of the views of the totality yeah, of yeah. the channel. They were oh, meaningless, pointless videos um, that uh, they probably didn't do anything, could have probably left them there. But it was more yeah. of this idea of like, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to focus on the thing, we know how YouTube works. It doesn't care about our creative itch. It doesn't yeah. care about our fucking emotions. It wants us no. to show up, do our job, get people to click, stay, and watch. 
And whether yeah. people like it or not, that's the reality. And that's how you become yeah. successful at it. So yeah. the way that you articulated just instead of you're not hitting the nuclear button and starting to do, you know, Caleb Francis skit, long form skits on your, you know, uh, main channel right now saying, hey, <laughs> audience, just deal with it. I need a, a creative refresh. You're slowing down. You're still doing the, the main thing. And you're like, I'm going to use the other places that content's recycled so much anyways. It's going to be fun. And that's what happens. Uh, you do that. And then you have the a viral clip with your wife where you talk about right. urinating. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. You just, you never know what the fuck's going to hit. And that's, no. it's all, a, it's all a bit of a balancing act. Like once you have something that works and it becomes a, 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 a business model that uh, provides for you, like it would be, it would be ignorant in, in my opinion, to just be like, nah, I'm bored and yeah. I don't feel inspired. So I'm just going to hang it up completely. Like, yep. okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Pump, <laughs> little pump red brakes, alert, a little, little, little like, deep. Yeah. yeah. How can we, like, there's clearly a market for this. People clearly like it from you. How can you weave this into what you do to keep it going in some capacity to con and use that to fund other creative adventures, right? Right. And I think that's the goal of it. So uh, for anyone that's fortunate enough to be able to make some sort of living online as uh, someone who uploads content to some site, I mean, it's just, it's fucking crazy that I, like, it's, it's, it's first of all, just crazy that you can take a camera, record a bunch of shit, edit mm. it and upload it to the internet in eight minutes and all of a sudden you're like, Dude, you can make a living off that. I, it's, I, it's obscene. I, I told you in Texas, I like being the creative background, one of the things that just still blows my mind um, to this day, it's so hard to articulate, but like the, what we're doing right now, like 10, 20 years ago, the budget that you needed to have to produce this type of content is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, you, we right. we stood yeah. no chance in a world of like Hollywood, for example, right. 20 years no ago chance. to get this production. We would have had to yeah. probably get sexually harassed by some crazy, you know, director <laughs> yeah. by some Craig movie company. What was the Nickelodeon guy? <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Was. We had gone through all that shit just to be on the camera. And now we can buy cameras that produce better shit than the things that we grew up watching. I think that's, that's just the the, one of the dopest things ever, man. Yeah, I would I would totally agree. It's uh, it's it's very easy to take it for granted too. I think mm -hmm. there is. I know I've seen you talk about. Uh, I've seen you talk about this before too. Um, just kind of the general vibe of people who are maybe wanting to be in a position that that we're in. Whether you know you're you're making some money doing what you're doing. You're doing some brand deals. You're able, whether you're able to do it full time or do it part time. That you know this is now becoming the you know the young kid's dream job everyone between the age of six and 16 wants to be a content Dude, we're, we're 1980s rock stars that's the yeah. biggest comparison it, and it's terrifying because like okay if everyone if everyone if you know 80 percent the kids you pull in school want to be a content creator like who's left to do the the actual jobs that keep the infrastructure yeah. of this country alive yeah <laughs> you know like at what point is there some pendulum swing back you know, that maybe I won't think that far down the road, but for people in the situation, I see a lot of people that come in and they, you know, there's this, I, there's this kind of entitlement, I think and yes. it might be around oh the fact that a lot of people spend so much time consuming content and all that they see is content from people that are good and funny. And oftentimes their algorithms are feeding them content that's doing well and it's doing well for a reason. And then they go and try it themselves and they think that like, you know, Instagram is shadow banning them or yeah, YouTube yeah. or kick. It's like, they're like, what, why aren't, why aren't my videos being it's shown like, to uh, people? And it's like, that's just, not, it's like being a, uh, it uh, like. it's like being a basketball fanatic out of nowhere and, and yeah. just getting into the NBA, loving every bit of it, get on some nice <laughs> pair of J's, get that new $2,500 yeah, yeah. airless bounce ball that you see on, you know, unbox therapy. Right, you go to right, the court right. and you fucking suck and you're like the fucking shoes, man. It was the like, it guaranteed. It was the shoes, man. It's holding why me back. Hasn't my agent showed up yeah. yet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. NBA isn't giving me $5 million. Like what the fuck is this kick? Like what's going yeah. on here? This is crazy. Yeah. It's, I, I don't know what I've, I've asked that for a long time. I don't know why it is specifically content. And and more so streaming. Streaming's the worst one with that, at least in my experience. Yeah, I would I would agree. Yep. I don't I don't uh, know the entitlement with streaming. I don't get where it comes from. Well, even just clips from like 
And I know some of this over the years, I've seen like these rage bait clips from these, you know, OF girls slash streamers that denigrate their subscribers, calling them poor if they can't afford it to sub and stuff. And part of that, <laughs> yeah. I, part yeah. of that I think is a meme, but I have seen, it, it is, I have yeah. seen genuine clips from people that are like actually mad at people for not paying them or supporting them. And I'm like, man, I could like <laughs> any, you know, I've streamed off and on for a while. It was never my main source of income. It's it's, it's tough. Fun I will say, like it, I put, <laughs> other times, I, I'm glad. I'm very I, glad it's not my main. I source did that of in income. 2019. I, I yeah. uh, you know, I full. I had a crazy year. I wasn't prepared for it. it. Just happened. I went literally from making like I streamed for years to put my graphic design. That's I didn't even go yes. live to build a brand. I was like funneling everything back into my business because that's yeah. what I started off with behind the scene. So in my world, I was already doing and working with guys like, you know, uh, we were doing like Dr. Disrespect stuff. We're doing, uh, you know, Lyric stuff. We're doing fucking Gosu's. We're doing all these big guys stuff anyways, behind the scenes, some of it NDAs. I was working yep. for an agency at the time. And my thought was, why am I not capitalizing on the middle guys? So I started I was streaming on YouTube, my graphic designs to promote packs and I had a Patreon and I was like, I'm going to start streaming more on, on Twitch. Cause I would started streaming there on Justin TV. So once yeah, that yeah. rise started happening, I'm, I'm doing all this work with these guys. I'm seeing their budgets and I'm like, Holy fuck. What is, what is this? What is streaming right now? This was 2015. And I'm yeah. telling everybody like, you guys need to get into streaming. These guys are making insane money. So I went there simply to promote the design. I would offer mid-level creators discounts. They let me stream their stuff. So these guys that were getting like one, 2,000 viewers, I'm streaming their stuff. They're like, yo, this guy's streaming my shit. So they're coming through. Their viewers are coming through. Their viewers want to purchase the designs from the same designer that's or, you know, making their stuff. That's where I started. I didn't, I didn't do Twitch at first to make money off Twitch. And then 2018... Or 2017, 2018, the ninja stuff. They do. Yeah, they started the doing the, the Fortnite. The Fortnite. Yep. Boom. Affiliate yeah. came out. They the the subs came, and I mean, within a year, I went from like not being monetized on Twitch to generating, you know, three thousand dollars a month. And when you yeah. live in Ohio, and you and your Such your wife's huge. mortgage, you and your wife's mortgage is three hundred and fifty dollars a month. Oh my god! You know, I just, <laughs> are, I just came into my house. <laughs> like, yeah. my monthly rate of living between the both of us was oh. like, oh my god, it was like fifteen hundred dollars a month. In Ohio, when we lived in Ohio, so at the you're time. covering expenses already, just from yeah, that. yeah. So, <laughs> it, the, and crazy. I'm running a graphic design business, and at the time, I'm working at Tiger Fitness, uh, which is yeah. a uh, a big supplement company, and they took yeah. care of me very well mm -hmm. there. So it was like it was literally just it just happened. So mm -hmm. I went full time in 2019, and you know, picked up, moved down south to be around more creators and just be in a better mental out, outside of Ohio. You know, once the seasonal depression hits in Midwest, God, that just fucking, fucking sucks. I know yeah, you're from up too, there. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, it just, it's sometimes I get it. It's, it, it, you didn't ask for it and it happened, but I never had a moment where I blamed my viewers. I, there was a couple of times when I had a rough patch when we moved to Charlotte and I would go live and in my head, I know if nobody subs today, I'm fucked. And if nobody subs tomorrow, I'm more fucked. And the next, so that pressure gets to you. But I, tough pressure, yeah. I, I couldn't even imagine blaming another human being no. for what I put myself in. That was, that would no. be like, so that was actually one of the first uh, memes that I had a big viral uh, Twitter skit on was that it's five dollars creator. Oh, the, the, yeah, it's creator five dollars girl. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean yeah. her because I, the, I, yep. that was because I was in some of my worst times as a streamer. I'm like, this is pure ignorance. You're just you're self centered. That's all this is. Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's one thing to you know you can dispute the value of five dollars. We're like, oh, that's nothing to some people, but to other people, it's a big deal. Sure. Yeah. But beyond that, it's like motherfucker. Like these people are. Like you're just sitting in front of a computer doing shit. Like yeah. whether you're gaming or whether you're like watching videos or chatting, like you should be kissing the feet of somebody willing to give you five bucks for that dumb shit. You know? Oh, yeah. You know, like I so anytime you know, I was always very grateful of people that wanted to sub and it's like it's 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 flattering that people want to support you because 
you know, it's, they, they might not even love what you're watching or doing at that time, but maybe they just like your overall brand yeah. and who you are as a person. Most of the people that subbed to me on Twitch probably did so because they knew me from YouTube already. So yep. there's, there's that. There's I'm a that member piece, on your but, YouTube channel. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. We oh, used, Jesus. We, I just, we'd watch I some of your videos. I probably have a section on there that says there's perks for being a member on my YouTube channel. Which I haven't updated <laughs> since 2018. I don't even know what it says. I, we didn't even care. Uh, I, we, we watched some of your videos. Um, like, I think actually you covered a couple times, like spoiled, like Twitch streamer, you know, gets yada, yada, yada. And we'd watch yeah, it. And like a brain worms yeah, or something and, probably. And my yeah. whole thing was like, if, if we would watch a YouTuber at the time, I, I would try to join the members or something and, you know, financially kick back and a couple people Love in the community it. would do, do the same, same thing. So appreciate yeah. the content. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's fucking, that's funny, man. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about kick nothing crazy i know you, you were you were pretty integral in we're out of know, contract the, so yeah that's what i mean we no can dig NBA, we can dig like, yeah the, the rise the rise of kick like you the, were kind of at the forefront of that you were making content about it you were one of the first people i think to sign a deal with them early yeah. on and you'll have to remind me how that came about was did they reach out to you because they saw you making content around it yeah to, uh, they to they, get you over to stream on kick so uh <laughs> Um, contrary to popular belief, there's actually a huge conspiracy going around amongst the small streamer world that, um, essentially like some of us were like, pre like it wasn't natural. It like, this was all part of a ruse to make it okay. appear of like, look at these guys that came over and just snap. And <laughs> they're not even that smart to think of that. Like they don't curate content like that. Okay, they, they, yeah. they really are just a casino company that has a lot of fucking money and are That's hiring it. other people <laughs> to compete yeah. with, with Twitch. And yeah. I mean, I will say, you know, they do it in, in good light. They know they have that money to fuck around and they do want to make yeah. a better platform. Um, sure. That's not to say it is a better platform. You know, I'm not going to bullshit. I think it's got a lot of problems. We've talked about that. But um, well, they've got some big names over yeah. there now, which the money, that's what the money can do at least is yep. get you some big names to be over there. So like they, they made a splash very quickly for a site that came out of nowhere than train wrecks and Eddie. Mm -hmm. like, but even train, like, you got train wreck, like boycotting it right now. He's he, boycotting kick right he's, now. He's not, he's, he's not streaming there until they get their streamers under wrap. Apparently. That's interesting. Yeah, a little coming from him. That's the, he's more just a straight casino guy. He doesn't like yeah. this IRL. Bullshit, well, at least yeah, I was gonna say I should say that that's not vocal. He didn't actually like put out anything or say that. he was <laughs> responding in a chat like, "I'm not even gonna stream here until they get it under under like get this fixed." They're basically saying that some of these other streamers are embarrassing the site, which I think that's fair to. Fair to so, agree like, with, yeah. Neon, Jack Doherty. Yeah, types. yeah, I would, I would assume yeah. so. Obviously, you know, yeah. the screenshot didn't really say anything. It was just him in another person's chat and somebody screenshot and doing their, you know, kick news tweet, you know. Even Trainwreck <laughs> said that he's over the embarrassing streamers that give the platform a, a bad name. But, yeah, no, I, I, I just, I tried it out because I, honestly, I seen a cocksucker on Twitter that I'm not a big fan of was hating on a pretty nice individual. And this yeah. was like when we were in the early stage of, of kick where, you know, the Aiden Ross porn thing. So I'm like, well, I'm not touching this place, but I had my at That's name. That's funny. Yeah. I forgot about Aiden yeah. Ross. Yeah. He was ground zero for fucking yep. so, streaming NFL games, watching yep. porn. I, so I, I joined right after that, literally just a few weeks after <laughs> that. And I had, I literally dude, no plan to, to even touch the site. I was already, so I was kind of fading behind the scene and I started working with some YouTubers to help optimize their Call of Duty videos and shit. And I would already, and I already started getting brand deals from the other stuff. So I was kind of like done with streaming and seen that guy being an asshole on Twitter. I know they're an asshole and they stream on Twitch. The guy that they're being rude to was a really lovely individual that streams on Kick. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, man, I'm going to go test this out just because I know it will piss this guy off that I'm tweeting about it and I'm gassing it. And I want to see how bad it really is because you're a Twitch streamer and you're a piece of shit. And this yeah. guy that you're really giving a hard time to is actually a really good individual. It's like big, you know, big man of God. And his whole thing is, you know, really his community and, you know, blessed and everything. So gave it a try. And literally just naturally first couple of days, 
because I create the content talking about the platforms. I create the Twitch skits. Um, people started obviously coming over. People started calling me the CEO right away because of the yeah. CEO skits that I do. Well, Kick jumped on board on that. They thought that was funny. And it was literally just the fucking most insane timing. Kick or Twitch came out with that shitty update the <laughs> next week. Like a week after me being there. That's right. They came out yeah. with a horrible update. And within I two streams, it was like 200 viewers to 2,000 viewers like that. Because everybody was coming over to want to know what Kick is after Twitch did this stupid because shit. Because Twitch keeps yeah. shooting themselves in the foot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there was a weird spree of like right as Kick was on the rise, they're landing some big fish. Now, Aiden was like the first big fish they locked in, right? I feel like Aiden and XQC maybe. Well, it was it would have been Train, but then yeah, Aiden. Well, Train, he, but he was like co-owner, wasn't he? Yeah, least? I don't know. It's it's so weird. Um, I I don't know the actual dynamic. I think he is, but I I don't know if it's like one of those things where it's like more shareholder co-owner. Okay. Um, I don't so know it how it works. Been, yeah, yeah, like you be the spearhead and you'll get like equity or something. Yeah, like that. I yeah. would assume maybe. Yeah. But then Aiden sense. got banned. So then he got the deal. He got banned yeah. on Twitch for the ninth That's time. Right. It's good to point so, that yeah, out. Yeah, Nine, yeah. Ninth time. Everybody articulates this idea. Well, he had to go to kick. It's like Twitch would have brought they him back. He was huge on Twitch. Back. Yeah. 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 It would have let him back. Then it was, uh, yeah. Who, yeah. Who, yeah. It was XQC. That was the, that was the big shock factor. Guy. Yeah, the hundred the hundred million hundred, dollar yeah. headlines, which yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, know. equity and and probably how much event. money of that is actually in his bank account right now begs to be Pro it's probably pond pondered, I, but I think Devin, you ever watch Devin Nash? He, uh, he he breaks down like stream stuff a lot. I've heard I've heard of him, yeah. He he runs uh I think he I think he runs an agency that has like okay. millions worth of you know funding for brands. And okay. um, so he broke it down in a good way that most likely it is. Yeah. And it's probably most likely a monthly salary to stream. It's still a lot of fucking money. Oh, I'm yeah. It's more money than we'll all we'll all see for, <laughs> yeah, sure. for sure. To, to shit on it. For a lot sure. of, you know, it's. That's all I hear when I watch that dude stream. My question is, does any, I, I'm very curious if any of these guys get anything with steak because of it. Anything in regards to what, like, like shares, I mean, or, that's where or, the money's or, coming from, anyways. With, I guess. But like I mean, shares, like actual, like, do they get anything with stake? I don't know how that works yeah, with stake. I know like it's what owned by like three people or something like that. I think so. But like you know, a, a company like that, it's got to have like shares and equity too, right? Or I, I don't know. I genuinely don't know how that works. Wait, did Nick Merckx join Kick too? Am yeah, Nick Merckx join join Kick. He, he's That's got a right. deal too. I forgot about that. He was one of another. Big uh, fan, they really Tifu. pushed the fuck out of some of their biggest people. Tifu came back for Tifu for quit. Kick. Yeah, he came back yeah, for no, kick. I remember that was that was huge. Is he still streaming regularly right now on kick? I, I don't think he ever streamed regularly, but yeah, he still streams. He was live. But like, he's streaming. He he does like event based shit. He'll, he'll go live on like the uh, the the random a base event stuff. But you, you got Vitaly New season drops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I think he mostly does like IRL challenges now. I think that's like his get the fuck out of here really yeah i think that's like wild. it's like doing irl stuff i don't know i don't, don't really watch a lot of those guys no I, you know i'm yeah. trying i mean they, they trying so hard to do his, my so thing they probably have like a way they have like a warehouse and him and his brother juke squad have yeah. done quite well if you're familiar with juke yep. they they live down in florida and they've they've got a bunch of commercial property and they do all types of stuff they've really fucking killed it juke squad was actually i met tifu did i meet him the juke squad was actually in the Mr. Beast circle that I was in in 2018. Oh, when okay, Mr. yeah. Beast, he that was one of that was Mr. Beast's first creator challenge where he brought in like people from all over the country to do this big thing. And Jug was one of the guys I was in there. Dude, I always forgot. Was. I always forget that you're on Danny Mr. Duncan. Beast. Yeah, I met some fucking. I met some. <laughs> Wait, Danny D was there. Day. Danny Duncan, dude. He was one of the final ones. We won it together. And we was one of the four that. Holy lasted, shit! Lasted. Yeah, and that's yeah. crazy because like I didn't watch that guy at the time, so I have to go back and like uh, watch that. Oh, dude, it's it's so funny to see where some of these guys have gone since then. Like, Danny was, I remember it be, standing in the circle with him. It was November of 2018, and his virginity rocks had, like, just blown up, like, huge that year. And he, I remember, you know, and I was, I, I was definitely the smallest fish in that pond. Like, I had just had my blow up like two months oh, ago yeah. where I went from like 200,000 to like almost a million or like 800,000 subscribers. And it was what, like, what was it that I did that just, for you? 
the uh, I had made I had made a, a video about the uh, two two Australian brothers yeah. that were faking that they faking, were dying. Yeah, yeah. And then they responded, and I made another response to their video, and they both went mega viral, got seven million views, and uh, I'm sorry, several several million views apiece, and like took me from you know that was when I was like you know in that situation where I was. I had been slow grinding for uh, two years on YouTube and like I was making a couple hundred bucks, eventually broke four figures. I was making maybe like 1,500, 2,500 a month. And then all of a sudden, bang, in one month, I was like, I made as much as I make in eight months in the restaurant. It's crazy. I was like, holy fuck. And then in part, in part of that, and this whole thing, the whole timing was crazy because, you know, I had made a video about Mr. Beast because this was in simultaneously when Mr. Beast was blowing up from his counting to 100,000 videos. Oh, yeah, 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 and yeah. he was still at like 400, 300,000 subscribers when I made this video. And he 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 shot me a message on on Twitter after I made it. He was like, "Dude, I thought that was really funny." And it you know I made it in good taste, where I wasn't like bashing him. I was just like, "This is insane. This dude's literally yeah. just torturing himself and going mega viral." And <clears throat> so he reached out and was like, "I thought that was super funny." So then a couple months later, I have my blow up videos, and then he two months later reaches out to me he's like hey i'm doing this thing in la i'm like we're doing this circle fucking whatever and he's like do you want to come out and i had just had my son he was born. he had been born like two like you know two or three months ago and every part of me was like i'm a very i'm kind of like a weirdly a recluse too like i'm i'm extroverted on the surface but i very very much am comfortable in my home state that doesn't take inertia to do things. Yeah. A lot of people are probably like that. So I was like, oh, I don't know. He's like, well, there's, a, you know, $100,000 at stake. The last person to survive in the circles. So I asked my wife, thinking she's going to be like, we just had a kid. Like, well, you can't leave. And I asked her, I'm like, yeah, Mr. Beast. Like, and she doesn't know who he is at the time because he's like just kind of just having his come up too. Yeah. And I tell her, and she's like, oh, you got to go. I was like, oh, okay. W wise. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how my Fucking wife is it, about dude. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. So yeah, what an experience. So I went out to did that. I ended up, you know, uh, so all that was to say I was backtracking there, but I, out of the people in that circle, I was very new to YouTube money. Like I just had my first real paycheck. And, um, so I was like, there's no, I'm, I was like, there's no way I'm going home. I'm, there's no way I'm either going to pass out and die in this circle or I'm gonna leave with something. <laughs> Did you? You got like what top three or something? That, uh, we we're top four. Ended top up four. To four, and <laughs> you know it, it went on for long enough where they're like, "Yeah, you guys can come to an agreement and split it." So I took home 25k. Got a quarter. Of that, oh, that's right. That's which, right. That was the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Massive payday for me. It was unreal. I was like, on top of like two big months on YouTube, 25 from Mr. Beast. I was like, dude. And I I remember the next day. I woke up and I, I would linked up with some of the guys that were there. These were like couple of the a couple of OG like English YouTubers like Will N E and Casper Lee, some guys that were like huge in the like twenty tens and had like made their millions. And we all went shopping in a mall together. And these guys, they're like running around like buying three hundred and fifty dollar fucking Balenciagas. Jesus. They're like buying five thousand dollar Gucci watches just for fun. And I'm in there like I just won twenty five K. I just had you know, made more money in two months than I had made in the last two years in working in a restaurant. And I'm still like, I'm still, I don't like, have that mindset. So I'm like, it, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't, I was just like paralyzed. I was like, oh, I'm like seeing these guys. And I like felt, I was like, I remember I was so close to buying like a Gucci watch and I, there was just this pivotal <laughs> moment for me and I'll never forget it because like, it's always informed the way that I live. And I, I was so close. I was like going to call the rep over to like try it on. And I was like, why the fuck am I doing yeah. this right now? Like, I don't even like this watch. I'm yeah. literally just, I'm literally just feel like trying to keep up with these dudes and like no. spend money yeah, on something I don't even like for no reason. And in hindsight, I'm so glad I didn't. Went home and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, just whatever, probably bought something else stupid and stuff. I was going to say, one of my, one of my first big months, I, uh, after I signed with steak, I, I, uh, I, I got a gun. Yeah, I bought yeah, a, I okay. bought, no, bought a nice shadow not. system. Yeah, yeah. Fuck I was yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I was like, what could I do to something? That is Leon Lush approved, my yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What could I buy <laughs> to where it will keep its value? I won't just spend this on stupid shit. Oh, I think a gun is pretty cool good. as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. And since then, anytime I have a good, like, pivotal month or a good thing, I just reinvested into to, to another gun. Got like four or five now ever since. That process, I think it's a pretty good investment. I think that's a pretty good. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah get into. I agree. 
And you're in a state, you're in Virginia. North Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Yes. So you can, yeah, mass is weird. So I, I have a, I have a decent little arsenal here, but I'm running out of room in my, in my safe. So I, my, my recent, uh, shopping research has been around like a, a big Liberty safe or some sort of safe. Oh, that's like, yeah. That, you big, know, the that big I can guy. Put my garage. Yeah, the big yeah. boy. Yeah, like, that's what we, big we're fucking captain's wheel on it. We're looking I mean? at. Yeah, I was looking at getting a safe, and every one of my. I mean, we were just out in Texas. You know how they all are. Every yes. one of my gun buds, where they, they live and breathe that shit, they're like, no, go big first. Don't even. They're like, trust me, you've gotten yeah. five guns in a fucking year. <laughs> like yeah, get, a get a little dicky just, shit. Yeah, just just do just it. Drop two yep. grand on a and, and two, two grand and on the, a fucking sick one. Bingo. And you know, at, at, what one It'll of the other forever. One yeah. of the other things that we started getting into through like some of the the grow up year and a half that I a couple years that I've had is like we've getting been getting more into getting hold, cold hard cash. You know, ever since the pandemic and shit, I'm like, we yeah. better just have like a lot of money too. You know, I know it does. I, I hate the idea of having cash because it doesn't do shit. Yes. but it's it's always good to have it. It's still at the end of the day is the well half the time it's that transferable good that you can use now nowadays most places you go to you can't even use cash any fucking more. But <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I just feel like it's good to have it. So just having a bigger oh, shape like, like to put in there. Physical cash, yeah, not physical. In the bank, you mean? Yeah, yeah, physical sure. cash, not in the bank. Yeah, I don't want them to have everything. So getting a big no, shape to throw shit into and. Yeah, exactly. You keep that's what I mean. Like, there's you always want like a couple diamond bracelets, little cash, like the traditional yeah. Yeah, burglars, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, what a burglar would want to find in a safe. <laughs> yeah, or, <laughs> or the or the, the guns. The big thing is, is uh, you know, because I've, I've seen it firsthand growing up uh, in, in our neighborhood. The big thing is having things that mean a lot to you and putting that in a safe because fires like can happen really fucking quick, tornadoes yeah, can yeah. happen. It's yeah. You know, life Sentimental things, things yeah. passports, hundred percent. Yeah, that's one, one of my safe right now, which is not fireproof. Uh, <laughs> a, a fellow creator in, in our industry, um, one of his stories that you know, I don't want to say names because he hasn't like ever told it. That's definitely his business. But they, he grew up and they had a house fire when he was in his oh. young twenties, and he's like, dude, you just you don't understand, like, what How you, you can lose everything. He's like, he's right? like, literally, like our life was gone. Like, yeah. His, his dad wasn't around, so a lot of the stuff was him and his mom memories. He's like, every Pictures memory, every really, yeah. every device, everything that meant anything to you at that age, like it's yeah. it's gone. Like nothing yeah. survives that. I'm like, wow. Puts a perspective. No, fire yeah. is a indiscriminate destroyer. <laughs> Doesn't <laughs> give a shit. Not, yep. No. Nope. Does not give a fuck. It will burn your shit to the floor. Well, I'm actually surprised we haven't seen like a Twitter article yet that like fires aren't like sexist or racist or yeah, something at this is, point and that's like the new thing weather's like weather is like a like a a, a racist thing now like they're pushing uh government control i don't know that's I like i always i always knew it was i always figured rain I, was I racist. Had, so yeah no. still, it had a good inclination yeah there was like the whole thing with like uh dubai or india when it was like they just had like that flood a few weeks ago they're like yeah government oh in dubai yeah yeah, yeah all government for sure <laughs> just all government Dude, it's so funny. So here's the deal, though. Like, I didn't know this, but from what I understand, they there, there's an act, there's actually a method of that is uh, man made is not the right word. It's engineered. Yeah, where they inject the mag like moisture into the sodium clouds, or some shit. Yeah, they essentially inject some shit into the clouds in order to spur rainfall. Because it is so dry and it's like, you know, it's like a desert essentially. Right. If there wasn't any rain, like life couldn't exist. So I was reading, I, I again, this could be completely conjecture and hearsay. That part, I believe that maybe there is some system that where is they do things definitely to help true. spur the rain along. But there were other, you know, the conspiracies coming out of how like they yeah. fucked it up or the government did it on purpose and they did it way too much and made it oh, completely flood. And there's no... And there's no infrastructure in Dubai for that kind of rain. Like this is probably like a rain that you know I would get in New England, and all right, we'd have some. Oh, fucking, I get what you're of, saying. Yeah, a couple of roads would be under a few inches of water, and then it would go away. But you do that shit in Dubai, a place with no infrastructure for heavy rain like that, and the place was a fucking. Oh, it was fuck. a swimming pool. Yeah, I seen the clips of it. I seen the clips yeah. of it for sure. Yeah. So the the reason I saw a lot of clips is because there was a, a crypto event in Dubai as this was going on, and I spend a lot of time on crypto Twitter watching people I follow. I'm a big lurker. 
And so I was just getting a stream of all of their personal videos from their video because they were over in Dubai for an event. And they're like, what the fuck? I thought this was supposed to be paradise. It's like where all the crypto bros go because there's no taxes. And it's like <laughs> all these wealthy people and beautiful girls and blah, blah, blah. And they're there. This is my, they're like, this is my second day here and I have to fucking canoe to the event down the main street. I'm just street. saying literally the bullshit. worst fucking timing to go to, to, yeah, to Dubai yeah. for sure. Oh I, my God. You, you ever you ever think about going there or like you ever have like a, a want to go there? <clears throat> I would love to visit it um, just to see it. I don't, I don't think I have any desire. Well, I don't. Re if I was young and s single and making money on YouTube, like I would consider moving to a tax haven like that because oh, the amount no of shit. money you save. Like, I mean, this is the reason Logan Paul moved to Puerto Rico and all these things. Like, oh, you fuck, get absolutely he? fucking. Like he lives yeah, there. I don't know if he still. He don't even. I don't know if he. I don't know what his current status is, but there was a period of time where he was dual citizen in Puerto Rico. Oh no shit! Essentially, spend X amount of days in Puerto Rico a year because well, you are exempt from U.S. taxes. Well, we're or just whatever. talking about the the kick stuff. I I'm pretty sure that's like one of the things that came with Nick's deal with old Nikki's deal. I think oh, they got him. Yeah, I, get, I think state. Uh, I'm pretty sure state got him a house out of the country. What a guy. So like, yeah, don't yeah. pay me until I get dual citizenship. Yeah. And then now, yeah. Yeah. yeah so then like whenever, really smart. whenever he does his steak streams, so that way he can do steak.com and not steak US. Steak.com is more profitable for them. Uh, so he, he flies to his, uh, his offshore house. Yep. Yep. Goes out there Love and, it. and DJs yep. out there, man. What a world we That's live in. probably in Puerto Rico, if I had to guess. I, I yeah, no, no idea where it actually is. I just know that that dude, was the like flight, the thing. Like the, he's, he lives in Florida. The flight from Florida to Puerto Rico is like be 45 nothing. minutes. Yeah. It's nothing. It's like you hop on a puddle jumper. Maybe the part of like you fucking let him, maybe steak may, lets him fly private, goes out there once a week, does the steak. To, like, I mean, I can only imagine. It's actually That's crazy. Wild. It's crazy how much, like, you know, okay, so for, for me, for example, um, I got my first casino deal when i was streaming on youtube a lot of people don't know this it's just it's all Ooh. it's articulated that like oh now that you're on kick you're doing gambling it's like dude the amount of betting and gambling offers that are in this world and creator economy is insane and it's been around for quite a minute now i want to i'm gonna let you finish but i just want to set the record with that whole like kick is bad because gambling thing. Oh, God. Yeah. Like, motherfucker, gambling is at the heart of the human race. Yeah. It's been around since the inception of mankind. Have you, Dude. like, the amount of money that is being pumped in to, so recently sports betting became legal in Massachusetts where I live this last year. Shout out Massachusetts. I cannot Fuck take yeah. a shit or brush my teeth without getting a DraftKings ad shoved yeah. down my throat. Yeah, I Every did a deal with them last year. person on the fucking planet take sponsors from these so all of a sudden like just because you're a streamer and like maybe there's someone in your audience that's not an adult that watches you like you're not allowed to like you're all of a sudden evil because you're taking a deal with the gambling company it's, it's like don't get low-hanging fruit it's low hanging. yeah that's what it, it is 100 and don't get me wrong like th there's a lot of gray area with gambling i certainly yeah. think that like it's easy to be irresponsible there's people that shouldn't be gambling uh, it's the same with alcohol. Like I, <laughs> like Bingo. there's a lot of people that should not be drinking. There's people that can do it responsibly. And gambling is no different. But I would love to do a deal with fucking, uh, uh, you know, Suavecito or or Terramana or something. Fuck you know yeah, I mean? like an alcohol brand. Fuck, like. Uh, but yeah, I remember there was that witch hunt around people that were taking deals with Kick. Mm -hmm. and seeing all the money they were and like, well, you're promoting gambling to kids and all these things and. I don't know, man. Like uh, uh, moral, moral, are they? moral compass is, like, where, is where are their where are the just, kids' parents? Like, why? It's yeah, not, they're, it's not their job to parent the kids that are watching. No, them. I don't fucking know. No, I, I like the only the only argument in the last like year and a half with like you know the the pop off of kick and all that shit is when people come from a religious standpoint. I get it when you're like. You know, we got okay. a couple of mutuals that we respect and and to them, you know, I've seen like Arab's take on stuff promoting uh the gambling and stuff and it's it, 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 like from their perspective, yeah, he, I get why they don't like it. I'm not religious. Like and to each their own, I'm not knocking religions. I'm not I'm not opening up that circle. I'm just I'm in a world where 
I really like I envy that you <clears throat> believe what you want to believe and you live your life with that quality. And I, I think that's great, but I just don't have the same feelings as you. So I come from things from a very of like, how do I see everything? And it's like, uh, I think the easiest take where I just balance things is you can't measure bad. You can't say, well, I'm only 10% bad. You gamble, you're 35.7% bad, right? Sure. You can't criticize other people having less morals for going out after you go out and buy an iPhone, after you go out and promote a shitty energy drink product that is addictive with sugars and dyes, after you persuade mm. human beings to sit in your fucking eight hour stream playing video games. You, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I feel like all arguments go off the table at that point. We, we, our job as creators is to literally get you to click, stay and watch, fuck your life, fuck your time of your day, fuck anything that you do, sit and watch. We yeah. use social sites that manipulate your time. They're literally designed to take advantage of your dopamine, which is the same thing that gives you the rush of, like we, we said, yeah. gambling. And on top yeah. of that, we have no problem taking beer sponsors. We have no problem promoting that we go to these events and we go out and get drunk and have a good time and we party and we rave it up with these celebrities and, and rock stars now that we've gotten so big. All that is okay, but hey, if you gamble, you're promoting something bad to your audience. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. It's all bad. <laughs> Gambling's where we draw the line. Yeah, it's yeah. I don't. I don't draw it there. And like, and that's like you said. It was. It was around long before Kick. It's. It's still on Twitch. It's on YouTube. You know, there's. It's shittier sites. You know, in my yeah. opinion, you get the shittier slots, but it's still there. Like it's you. Every betting's around every corner right now. Yeah, and I'm not like. There's certainly shady practices that can be done for in the promotion sure. of it, whether people sure. are getting funded with fake money to act like they're winning more, whether the people promoting it are getting, you know, shit happening on the back end to make, you know, make it look like it's easier to win than it really is. Like I, I can see there's a lot of gray area, which, yes. which is oh, true with anything. For right? sure. For sure. But I would argue that if we're talking about promoting gambling to kids being this all great evil that uh you know will smite you down to the depths of hell should you indulge i, I would argue that the addictive nature of video games on a whole is probably much more detrimental to the youth of this country than gambling sex. yes i agree i agree with that not even close yeah not even close that and i'm not like that mr. video i'm not mr video games are bad yeah i'm just mr hey like video games are hyper addictive they're very, like, it is the fastest way to get f quick dopamine with little effort. They're unbelievable. That, you know, certainly you can make a living and stream and get, but, but man, most, most people aren't making a living playing them. And most people that play them probably play the, it, I shouldn't say most people that play them, And a lot of people play them too much to the point where it's very detrimental to their own life. Bingo. Uh, in a lot of different and, ways. And the justification is, well, look at these guys. You don't have that in any other industry. If if yeah. if you were to, well, we wouldn't say this because it's- you This know, comes, and I love, this comes from a guy who loves video games bingo. and plays them. Love right? it too, obviously. <laughs> so love it too. I got a gaming to channel. I, I, yeah. I, that's what I started all this. But it's like, again, we're, we're bringing it out to the point where it's like, we're articulating the idea of getting an understanding that- you can't shit on what somebody else is doing because you can articulate an argument because the reality is it's really not better on the opposite side, which is the example you're using is, is gaming. It's not better. Right. It's it like, it is unhealthy. And it is for some reason, one of the things that we justify of, oh, it's okay to do that eight hours a day because you might become the next pro player. You might become, but like even in that in itself, that's articulated and advertised. Like it's this big, amazing thing with a lot of opportunity you probably have better odds of becoming a faceless youtuber than you do <laughs> making hundreds of thousands of dollars playing as a pro player in any esports event besides maybe what like csgo league like the big the big big dogs without without having a successful brand that is i should say well, that, specifically that's what I mean. off a of grand you, game you can cast the net a little larger if you're a personality right but most in people fact, don't do like that that yeah, I, th th that's the problem. Is most people are like, oh, I just need to be really good. Bingo, good gameplay, and it's like, no, you. 
I mean, certainly that can happen, but you're much less likely to monetize that than being mediocre at video yep. games and being affable on camera, which, you know, to that point, that's not it. That's not everybody's strength. So Bingo. there needs to be some self-awareness there. If you're someone who can barely even look into a camera without fucking quivering, then yeah, maybe you being good at a game is, is real, but it's, it's, it's no different than any other, like, you know, wanting to be in the NFL or being in the, in the, in the major leagues. And it's not to say like, I'm not the type of person that wants to dash people's dreams. I think that, no, like if there's a natural talent there, you go for it. But video games is such a strange, well, not strange. It's such an interesting intersection of talent and I, I don't know. I struggle with this one because with, you know, with, with sports, athletics, like you're at least socializing with a team in person. You're out there, you're physically exerting yourself for the most part. Uh, I don't, there's, there's so many, there's so many byproducts that are beneficial to the pursuit of correct some sort of athletic goal. Yeah. I feel like with video games, it's the opposite. Like the byproduct of the pursuit of being one of the best gamers in the world are mostly negative. <laughs> like like isolation, like just not seeing the sun. <laughs> yeah, the, the, especially, sitting in especially, a chair for 12 hours at a time and not moving your body. Like there's just so many negatives. Especially when, when it's articulated in the form of success. And, and, right. and I think like... The, the reality is what me and you are talking about is not games and what mo what, it, what it should be designed for, which is the idea Ent of you got some free time, get a little yeah. entertainment, kick back, 100%. play games with the boys. You've heard so Love many that. celebrities and athletes say like, dude, gaming saved my life because when I got home from school and I lived in this area or yes. I had this family I did this. And I met some of my best friends because of, of gaming, you know, um, buddies that like drove nine hours to come to our wedding and shit. And like, that's, yeah. that really is the beautiful side of gaming. That's the, the dope side of gaming. Same. But uh, for some reason in our industry, it is articulated beyond that. It is, it is glorified to put degenerate hours in, to spend more time sitting down, to spend more time inside, to grind the ranks of this next game so they could try to be the leaderboard of, uh, you know, their streaming platform. And sure. in that aspect, that's not good for you. I, I, I'll take that to the grave. I don't agree with it whatsoever. I, I think it can be manageable. I think any person is within their control to take care of themselves physically before they get into that. Um, you know, I myself am a, a, a just a, a walking billboard of what years of justifying having a gaming creating job because I've worked in gaming for years, whether it was my own brand or working behind the scenes with people, I justified a lot of that shit. I justified sitting indoors all day, but like, let's be real. Nobody <clears throat> really wants to challenge themselves with that. If you can have that rush of dopamine by playing a game, by getting a recording, by leveling up, by hitting your ranks, it's going to feel good. You're not going to yeah. want to go out when you justify it to say, well, content creator, brand, people glorify this. It's okay. It's okay if I do this. But you're really doing more harm to yourself than anybody else. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, like you said, it's easy to justify, especially if you, you know, you're making some money doing it. Um, and, then, you know, I don't want to bully just gaming. This can be no, just content no, yeah. creation in general or like any, yeah. any sort of... Uh, any sort of passion or hobby, like so, there's sometimes in your life, like again, back to like the seasonality where it's going to be a grind. Like for me, I went through that with just the making videos on YouTube and I was unhealthily obsessed with it to the point where it was affecting my own life. It was affecting my health and probably mental well being negatively. But in hindsight, there was probably some necessity to that if I wanted to kind True. of break through a certain wall. So like, but it always comes back to for all of this, the thing I always circle back to, and I say this so much, I'm like, I always beat a dead horse, whether it's with gaming and whether it's with like growing a brand, whether you're an entrepreneur and you're building a business and you are working 
18 hours a day and not seeing your kids. And like, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, it's just fine. It's like knowing when there is a necessary, uh, knowing when you need to pump the brakes for a minute, Bingo. whatever it is, reassess, find a new balance, reintroduce some things into your life that have been neglected, whether that's relationships, uh, health, fitness, uh, time with family, whatever it is, you just like these things need to be constantly inventoried. And like with gaming, for instance, you can draw the parallel with alcohol. And I do this a lot and people shit on me because alcohol is a touchy subject for a lot of people that grow up with abuse, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I understand that, but finding the balance, like it's one, like it's one thing to fucking get home from work, do what you got to do around the house fucking grab a IPA and hop on and play a couple hours of games with the boys. Bingo. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah. Like so I, I, to this day am in touch with kids I grew up with that I probably wouldn't be in touch with if it wasn't for us playing games regularly. Uh, but I also struggle with just using it as an escape all the time. The second I am stressed Bingo. or the second I'm facing something that is difficult I shut down and it's super easy for me to go get those dopamine hits from video games. And for a lot of people that's scrolling social media, we all have that. It's so easy to access this cheap dopamine that is now so much more attractive than doing the hard thing. Uh, and they're like, f the first step is being aware of that when it's happening and then figuring out ways to uh, structure your time and your habits to make sure that you are specifically giving yourself time to do the hard thing. Because if you are always just like going through your day, like, well, I'll get to it. You're always going to choose the easy dopamine every yep. time. Every single time. So, especially so with that's, the, especially when those justifications come in. Well, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I answered three emails so I can yeah. take the rest of the day off. You know, I, 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 I started uh, seven hours. Yeah. I, well, I use, so Texas was a big, uh, a big kind of like transitional part for me. Um, mm. In this last year, I've gained like 35 pounds back yeah. from like the, the, the justification, the, well, I'm getting paid to stream now. Um, you know, there towards the end of my kick contract, I was getting guaranteed for X amount an hour. So I was like, I'm gonna play games again. And yeah, yeah, it was, it was fun, but to be honest, you know, it was because I didn't know what I was going to do once this stopped. Do I go mm -hmm. back to just going full course this? Do I focus on YouTube videos? It was like, again, the justification of, oh, well, I just don't want to think about it right now. For now, I'm just going to get up. I'm going to play games. I'm going to finish out my contract, make guaranteed money that, uh, you know, fucking quadruples what I was making at my first time job. And, and we'll just have fun. Who cares? But in yeah. that, you know, became the not going to the gym as much. And, you know, since tech there around Texas, you know, a couple months into the year, I was like, yeah, this just isn't fun. This isn't a good time. I don't feel mm -hmm. good. I've been through weight loss. I've lost a hundred pounds before already. Yeah, I, was, I, wanted, like, I wanted to, ask, I wanted to say, and I was going to bring this up because to the people listening, like you were a big boy. Mm -hmm. And you lost a shitload of weight. I was big. Found, yeah, I was you, mid three fifty or mid three hundred. Mid three fifties. Yeah. Found your stride. Lost a ton of weight. Got into the gym routine, and and I and I I relate to this heavy because I also was a big boy growing up. Um, lost a bunch of weight and have gained a bunch of weight back several times in my life. Yep. And to the point you just made, like when I was, when I had my, that you know my initial good years on YouTube when things were really cranking and I was going hard, like health for a lot of people is the first thing that they start to neglect goes your own, yep your own well-being and in the paradox of that is that that is the literal foundation of what you build everything else in your life on so like it, it, this this is my personal opinion having um, I, I I argue that having a grasp on your your even in gaming and what we do like i i just take guys like nick Merckx as a great example it is mm -hmm. no surprise that he is healthy and fit and always has been or he yeah. is he's a more fit guy and always has been and has become that successful it's no surprise that yeah. tim started going through the weight loss and went through more levels of success after yeah. that happened 
yeah. challenging yourself in other ways, getting going, getting into the things that challenge us for our jobs after we've already challenged us physically and we're hitting goals and things that we need to do as, you know, human beings. There's a, there's a rush, there's a, uh, a drive. And, uh, I mean, there's endorphins that you get from taking care of yourself anyways. It's just, it all feeds off of each other so much. It, it all connects so much. It does. I mean, it, it is all, uh, I mean, it, the, there's a ripple effect, I think, in life yeah. for, you know, the whole thing like, oh, you, you wake up, if you make your bed in the morning, that's one victory, and that one victory turns into the next yep. victory, the next one. And like, Literally read me, that book. Yeah, that's yeah, a great book. Yeah, like, and, you know, everyone's unique and different in their own way, but um, there is something about putting yourself first that will translate into wins outside of the things you do. And I don't know. It's interesting to me because, like, I don't know if it's cultural. Like, it's, it feels like it's so easy to be okay with not taking the to not caring about yourself like it's so and i get like there's a lot of levels to this i know there's like emotion like there's a lot of emotional and mental implications into people that really struggle with this and you know i i've gone through this my whole life and as have you someone yeah. who's very big lost weight put way back on like food is a weird thing because like uh it's a necessity to live we have to have it but it can also be an escape and a comfort, which is for most people that really struggle, I think uh, that is the piece they struggle with. It is not, it is. you know, you, you get to a point where you're not, you're not even eating to enjoy the food anymore. No, you're yeah. just eating to escape whatever yeah. it is, right? So there's like a lot of levers there that everyone, you know, each individual person might need to pull and figure out what it is in their life that they need to face to figure out how to get these things in order. And, you know, some people spend their whole life trying to figure it out. And it's, uh, it's interesting. It's I, I heard a quote that was like, uh, uh, I don't know, some podcast thing, maybe my mind pump. Um, those, the, I don't know if you ever watched that podcast. Highly recommend for you. Mind or, pump? Yeah, mind pump. Highly recommend like for you name. or anybody <laughs> that I think it's like the number one fitness and health podcast. Okay, that exists. Yeah. yeah, but it's like three guys that have been around the industry for a long time, and it's no bullshit. And they're very good coaches, very good uh, reputation, um, very good dynamic. But um, a lot of their thing is understanding that, like a lot of the you know weight loss and stuff, it it is hard because a lot of people. Are kind of fucked you know we're, we live in a society yes. where it is designed against us it, it like our food is chemically designed to be addictive it is one thousand percent you have to be counterculture at this point to really and, take care of yourself and the crazy thing is if you think about it uh, unfortunately food is the only addiction where you just can't knock like you can't you can't quit. do it you can't quit it cold turkey Pe period yeah you can't like <laughs> yeah, if right. if you're, you're right. addicted Smart. to heroin you know there is a, a road to get off of it just don't take it you need to be away from it there's alcohol yeah. it's the same thing you got to wean off but there's a, a an idea of don't touch it you can never not touch food it is right. a yeah. it is a lifestyle change that you will have to start to go through and you it's the addiction of needing to feel better then then you yeah. get addicted to that and it's it's correlates so much to what you know even started this where you were talking about you know the idea of like just taking your care of yourself just feels better it 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 motivates you to do better if most people myself included this is the journey that i'm even on right now is it's like the idea of getting out of the habits you know ever since we got back from texas my thing is like active daily first thing no, nothing like that's number one before i write a video before i go live nothing I want to get active first. 10, 15, 30 minute walk, a lift, don't care. I don't care what it is. I'm not going to complicate it. It's get a great moving. Start to the day. Get it's moving. A beautiful start to the day. Yep. Yeah. And and then the the other thing is just stop fucking buying junk food. Just start. Yeah. Like if I want to have a cheeseburger, that's fine. We're getting don't keep fucking great the house around you at all times. We're, right? we're getting patties. We're getting fucking our own buns and we're making it ourselves. We're making our own fries. We're doing, you know, like if we want to have a meal like that, do a little yep. pizza night, you know, whatever. It's a little indulgent, but everything is mostly like, let's make food here. Let's get whole food. Let's get steaks. Let's get veggies. Let's get fruits. And let's 
make it here because everything out there is is garbage, just pure fucking garbage. Yeah, it really is. I mean, cap capitalism is. I'm a capitalist at heart, but there is a lot of things that <laughs> it is ruining yep. the food industry for sure, and uh, you know, just lobbyists and the fact you know the 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 agent the um the government institutions that are meant to protect the consumer and make sure we're not hurting ourselves and and we're eating healthy foods they're all bought and paid for by the, the oh, lobbyist yeah. industry so i you know i don't you can't trust a thing that comes out of the fucking government and i think a lot of people know that but it's also hard now when you look for information online there's so much good information but there's so much shit that is just like anecdotal and trust me bro yeah. you really have to do the research well to, the the diets is the tough one and that's what really scares everybody right it's always the right it's all like, carbs are bad yeah, carbs yeah. Are good. yeah what, like, what is fat, it this, high yeah. fats bad i've had it's good like like you can you can literally for every popular fat over the last 30 years find forums of why this God. is the reason people this is the reason people lost weight and then you can find just as much information of why that exact thing is going to kill you yeah like it, it doesn't matter polar, what yep. it is polar so opposites i can understand why it's a little daunting and, and f like fitness is in a weird place right now not not just fitness but like uh you know this idea in, in the united states I think specifically, like people would probably put this under the woke umbrella, like the fat acceptance movement, this idea of like big is beautiful and all these things. And you see a lot of this discourse on Twitter um, and then you see the pushback and they're they're very often see it seems to be like this right wing versus left wing thing where it's like, right, you want to be fit and like we can't accept fat people and all these things and left wing. It's like you're beautiful, your body is whatever and all these things. And I think both camps are missing the mark and it needs to be somewhere in the middle like uh, you know there there's a difference between fat acceptance and loving and accepting and respecting people that are heavy yeah right? yeah, yeah but like you know what i mean like because i it, that it on one side it's like hey we need to be promoting all of these things like things that are objectively unhealthy yeah and then on the other side, it's like, oh, if you're fat, you're bad. And like, there's so much vitriol from people that are like, maybe just haven't had to deal with weight issues or have just been fortunate enough to live a lifestyle with a little more discipline or maybe haven't gone through some mental traumas. But I, as somebody who has kind of been on both sides of the spectrum, I've never been morbidly obese. I've been over 300 pounds. I've been yeah. heavy. I have a lot of empathy and a lot of love for people Bingo. that struggle with this because it is, I mean, I mean, if you look at the statistics, more people in the United States than not are struggling with obesity, right? Mm -hmm. Like from day to day. And like you said, this, this comes from, I don't say it comes from like, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. Cultural, it's the, it's the food, it's the, it's the agricultural, it's, it's the hormones and the pesticides. Like, oh, there's a million different things you can point to, but it does, at the end of the day, come down to the individual. Like, we have to have maximum uh, ownership of our lives. Bingo. Right? So, like, Bingo. no matter how many things we can point our fingers at now that are the reason we're unhealthy we still have the ability to educate ourselves and to make little decisions every day. And to wake up in the morning and do one thing for thirty minutes, it could transform our lives. But we have, we've, we've been, we've become too comfortable with pointing the finger at everything else but ourselves. Dude, spot on. So, so while I have empathy and I love and I respect and I adore so many people that struggle with their weight. And I don't think that you're any less of a person than anyone that is fit and with a six pack and selling their courses to people. I I can empathize with that struggle. Uh, at the you know we ultimately I think need to just have extreme ownership and whatever that is and like listen if you are someone who just like and this is the thing like you I don't think you there there are levels like uh, there are some people who are just comfortable living that lifestyle yeah. they understand yeah. the implications they understand what's in store and maybe their mind will change when they're a little bit older and they start to slow down a little bit faster than maybe some people that were 
taking a little better care of themselves, but that's your choice, baby. I love yeah. that. But it's once you start, once you start trying to bring into the conversation that like, oh, I'm, you know, I don't know. Some of the you, shit I've seen you, is just you so, have so to, wild. You have to consider me beautiful because I'm still a person and I made the choices to get here. So you <clears throat> have to be, you know, into this. And it's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. The, yeah, the physical attraction I, thing where they're trying I, to force on, like, if you don't find someone yeah, heavier attractive, yeah. you're fat phobic. It's like, I get the pass. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, just, I, I, I like Leon's not allowed because he's uh, he's pretty fit now. He's a pretty jacked guy, <laughs> you know. I'm still yeah, there. You get the <laughs> so I get a, uh, I get to speak out. You know, everybody that's overweight <laughs> likes to speak out on this aspect of the beauty. It's not, dude. It's fucking not. You know what's beautiful? Being able to, you know. Challenge yourself in a situation. God forbid you're in a, an, an actual situation and you need to pull yourself up from something or push something off of you, like being able to have the natural human strength to do something. That's probably yeah. step yeah. number one. But I'm telling you right now, as somebody who lost weight and was very proud of myself after growing up super heavy for so long and as the same person that gained it back, I not out of even the idea of what do you guys think about me? I'm a married man. Uh, luckily my wife doesn't give a shit. She's, she, no. she loves me for whatever, which makes it worse because I could be fucking 500 pounds and she'll Marriage still be, yeah, maybe. dude, I got, I got lucky as fuck. I genuinely did. Yeah. However, I'm not happy because when I see myself in the mirror, it's not about what will Leon say or what will that hot chick at the bar that I don't even know. And it doesn't matter because I'm married. Think about me because I'm a little yeah, overweight. Yeah. It is. Wow. Look at the results of, of how I let myself go. That's for yeah. me. Yeah. I let myself go. I let chose, like you go. said, the decisions. This last year, nobody held a gun to my head and said, hey, since you're getting money to stream on Kick Now and you're making all this shit, just fucking DoorDash every day. Just accumulate fucking $4,000 worth of DoorDash's orders this year. Like, nobody told me. Yeah. To do that last year, turn and that's what I did. And turn your room into the next Asmund Gold <laughs> neckbeard nest, dude. Yeah, get a little cockroach flying around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thirty-seven half-empty styrofoam Sonic cups just hanging out on the fucking folding table next to me, <laughs> dude. I can't, man. That guy's a whole. Feel, what do we think about that, dude? I, I don't, don't know. He, I he's. I don't think he's real. I I I love and respect the guy. By the way, love his content. Either love yeah. it, but I love his takes. Most of them. And uh, yeah, I think he's got a lot of decent takes too, lifestyle. But, mm, I don't know, but but the, it comes right back to what we were just talking about, where this dude has zero ability to take care of himself. And like, you know, I've seen the threads on Twitter. He kind of like caused a stir recently because I yep, you saw that online. The, on Twitter, the, right? Well, like, uh, well he, what's what's their name? Uh, Caleb just reacted to. Didn't Caleb and his girlfriend, uh, Oompa or whatever, Oompa uh, and Chris, yeah, yeah, Oompa, yeah, yeah. they they just yeah. did a reaction, and then and then Asmund did a reaction to them reacting, and to yes. their reaction to like his yeah. Roman shit, yep, 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 yeah, yeah. And I the the thing I saw go viral is Asmund said something about some girl said something that, like bad about his. Oh Roman. yeah. And, and then he or somebody else said something about the girl because she was overweight. Yeah, and like pulled, like poked fun at her weight. Ah, she's like just you a, can't, yeah. you can't talk Troll. about his rum if you can't take care. Blah blah blah. But like, so whatever that is. But yeah, like the Asmund's a funny situation because, you know, with with people that are heavier, like it's so you know, it's such a visual, it's such an outward expression, and it's impossible to like it's. It's the it's impossible to miss if you know you meet someone and they're three hundred fifty pounds you know that it's like all right well there's okay but there could be someone like Asman who like he's just has this type of dude like he's probably one of the, he's probably one of the unhealthiest people on the planet if I yeah. guess but he's skinny yeah eats fast food every day lives in a room fucking cockroach infested room he's like probably got a little bit of hoarder probably mental health like all these shits and like it's it's this weird situation because like he is so mega popular on the internet he's look up to by every neck beard in the world any wow guy like he has some decent takes that sound pretty socially aware but i have such a hard time with people who have that level of neglect for yeah. themselves, like how I get do you it. live in such squalor? You know, <laughs> like what, what the fuck? And like people are like, oh, Leon, like he's fucking rich. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. I'm like, dude, money doesn't mean shit if you are if you are like 
miserable. Like I, and it's hard for people that are living paycheck to paycheck. Like I get it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like, yes, the only yeah. thing they care about is becoming rich and nothing else matters. Like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. He fucking sleeps in a cockroach infested bed and a wall covered with his blood. <laughs> and like, it's, it's fucking weird, dude. Like what? <laughs> I and, just, and, and, and and the thing is, I think to the point that you're getting, it, it doesn't even have to be like you also living in your own filth to do that. Neither. I, I don't want to name drop, but I know if ho uh, hopefully no COD people watch this because they, they're they going to know exactly safe. who I'm talking you're about. Yeah, you're probably saying we're but I, low key right I, now. I, I, you know, since being in Charlotte, I made friends with a pretty decent COD player. And, you know, this guy is good guy, by the way, but like lives in a penthouse in the middle of the city, you know, like yeah. lives a very lavish lifestyle, very nice place. And he is one of the most unhealthy people I fucking know. One like, yeah, <laughs> like cook out at four o'clock in the morning, a hundred and like 40 pounds soaking wet. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I got him into the gym a little bit a, a, a few months back and you know, it's it's like I'm I'm having a trouble having him spot my bench. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, thankfully, even though getting bigger, I got to hold on to my strength still a little bit. But when your friend can't even lift two plates off of you, barely, you know, he's almost falling over. It's like, buddy, I think uh, I think we need to work on your 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 physical health. I don't know what that is, though. I don't know because it's like it's. I, it's so frustrating because he's such a good friend, and I know the road he's going down just cannot be healthy. I just know it can't. Well, th this is a this is an epidemic amongst just amongst just I feel like online creators. Like so, I've noticed this in my life, and I, one of the reasons I notice is because I'm an old dude, right? So like when I first started to find a community online in 2017, 17, 18, and I went to VidCon in 2017. It was when I was I was still. It was before I had my blow up and I was still at like, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 subs. But I was 30 probably at the time, 31. And just by the nature of the job and being in commentary, a lot of the people were younger, 18, 19, 22. Wow. And like I was staying at a house with just this slew of people. There was one other guy my age. But these younger kids, like I, I was blown away by how – disgusting they were like yeah. just, and i don't i don't know if it's i gave them a pass because they were younger and listen i was a little bit i was irresponsible when i was young and a bit of a slob and maybe i'm i'm looking through different colored lenses now because my wife has rubbed off on me and she's like a draconian cleaner like shits in order at all times but i was just like couldn't believe in in all the years i've met with people in this like creator space it's like your head is just so constantly in the clouds and consumed by like what you're doing and your phone and what you're doing next. Like all everything around you in your immediate vicinity and area is just fully neglected at all times. Dude. And I don't know what that says about like that in the long run, that's not a good habit to get into. Like how long can that sustain before that starts to wreak havoc on just every relationship or anything that you do? Like you got to take care of your own temple first and your immediate surroundings, where you are, where you're staying, where you live and everything. I don't know. I you just, know, you know, it's bad. And I'm a boomer. I think. No, I mean, no, I, 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 I just think it's just, you, 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 I don't know. I just think it's like, some of us understand that your environment around you is super important to how it's going to yeah. dictate your emotional feelings, which is going to make us more creative in the long run. Like you seem yeah. like you, you maintain your setup pretty well too. Um, you know, I'm obviously made my fair share of setup videos. It's probably the most yeah, fucking, barrel. Your shit is so crispy. I was going to ask you about that. You got, you got the, the nice looking lots and like you're always changing shit around. One, it just looks beautiful. Number one thing I get. You stage this. No way your setup is that clean. It's like, dude, this is my setup every day. Every day of my Tiny life. Because like, if at the end of the night, I will take the cans, I will remove them out, I'll put them in the trash, I'll put them in the recycling, you know, got to do my job, but it's taking care. You know it's a problem in our industry when nobody believes that this just basic maintenance You can is have done. a clean living yeah. area where you make content. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like I, you clearly couldn't play WoW, Biggie, all right? Yeah. If you're not at least no. yeah. one or two cockroaches in with just empty food containers everywhere, you're never going to be good at it. I remember games, when I'm I was sorry. like, so when I moved from Twitch to YouTube, I went full on into Apex Legends on the gaming channel. Yeah. 
So I was like grinding okay. to masters. I remember like the group of guys that I was playing with, I was like, hold on, I gotta bring my shit down the stairs. And they're like, the fuck? No, like you, you, you don't just get up and leave. Like these are, I'm like, I don't care. Like I, we take these things <laughs> down. I don't just leave dirty dishes and food, just sit in here for a moment. And they just couldn't them. believe, like you don't just let that sit. For, no, it's a dirty dish. I just walk my ass up 50 fucking feet and bring it down to the kitchen. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. It's cr such a yeah. crazy concept. Because you leave it I one day, those, and then the next day, and the next day. Yeah, yeah I do love those guys because they passion for good content sometimes. Yeah, they're oh, passionate. Yeah. It's funny to watch and laugh at, and it makes me feel better about myself. I do. I mean, I said that in the beginning of the video I uploaded today. It was like a body cam, and I was like, you know, welcome back to a new episode of watching body cam footage because it makes me feel much better about my <laughs> life. That sometimes I've, when I'm feeling down on myself, I watch these and I'm like, God damn it, Leon, you're doing okay. <laughs> Can I give you, I, I need to give you a little credit. There's one thing I really wanted to do while I was on here. You know, I, I recently tried to do a lot of the, um, the reactionary sure. stuff. I told you how, like when we were out in Texas, I tested one thing and it, and honestly it all did very well. Um, yep. I was, I was actually like kind of cooking. I don't know how you do it with your mental watching other people's shitty existence and them do it. Like you, you're, you're built different up there. I, I, I deleted <laughs> every fucking video I had. I was literally live last week. We were talking about yeah. the Vitaly stuff and yes. I literally mid conversation, I'm cooking streams doing good. I'm recording. I stopped the recording. I'm like, I can't do this chat. I, I've mentally, I, I literally midstream, midstream. Take in mind, this was two days after I put out a other a vitality, a vitality video, hundred k views in just two days. Videos yeah. cooking, delete it. I'm like, I can't do this. This is, I don't know how some of y'all do it. You, Caleb, you guys are built different to be able to talk yeah. about, to be able to consume. Just the the People, worst of society oh, at all times God. between brain worms and body cam. Yeah. I, it's interesting. You say that I would say, you know, I, a little bit of whiskey and I try to golf in the summer to take my mind off. Yeah. It and thank, I mean, thank God I have a, a solid family home life and relationship so I can leave and go home and just life is wonderful. God bless. But, uh, you know, I think about that a lot because as I sit here at, you know, Knocking on the corner of 39 this month. Damn. Uh, or knocking on the door. Of, Wouldn't have guessed. Uh, I, I do. I do. It does take a toll, man. I'll be honest with you. Like, I I do it. Um, and I. I can. I look. I'm happy that I do it because it. I can create funny moments from it a lot. And that's always the reason I'm doing it is like occasionally I'll interject a little bit of wisdom sometimes stuff that's obvious but other times it's more just like where is the moment where i can create a funny little response or bit right and re in response to this content and that's why i do it and there's uh an audience of people that enjoy that um but yeah you know i'm in that place where it's like what is and part of the reason honestly why i'm doing this right here with you right now is because this stuff fills my cup like whereas that's good having yeah. to constantly watch the worst dregs of society in these body cams and people just acting horrifically is draining you know and which you know kind of speaks to like this month when i had that kind of moment where i talked about already where i needed to take my foot off the gas and just like be creative and not like in that's part of it dude i just couldn't bring myself to sit down and like watch a bunch of fucking dude. dickheads so like there's this weird uh you know limbo where it's like <sighs> i'm going to continue to do it i i but my channel like leon lush from the jump has been kind of in that vein whether yeah. it's not always you know it's body cam has been yeah. more recent in the last year but it's always been built on the backbone of critical commentary where, you know, maybe that says something about me. I don't know. Like, I, I wish I could be the person who, like, created these beautiful works of art and stuff. But it, it was uploading these wonderful creations that I built from nothing and people loved it. But, like, as we spoke about earlier, there's the the pressure to upload weekly. And, like, they're, like if you want this to be a business, like, I'm not Van Gogh. I'm nobody crazy. I'm just somebody who has a good work ethic. Right. And, is good at this particular thing and I can do it 
consistently over a long period of time and it served me very well. But yeah, dude, it, it gets, uh, there are times where I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> like, here we go I again. wasn't planning on drinking tonight, but, you know, dude, let's pour up a glass I, of whiskey. I, I, I think, I th obviously, yeah. I experienced it on a much smaller scale, but I think yeah. what really hit me, like what my moment was, was actually, it's weird when you start watching that stuff and it's, so like, it's interesting. When I watch you do something or I watch Caleb do something or all those years when you would watch like iDubs or H3 like yeah you know we've been watching this type of stuff for years it's interesting because you creators do such a good job to where you're really watching you and you're watching you live through reacting this experience but then when you start yeah. actually reacting to some of these moments you see more of it you know because when when we watch sure, you react to something yeah. we're gonna see the cut clip moments as to where like there's definitely those clips where there's some, like the things that are just dragging you out and you're just like watching this and you're just like, oh my God, like this is really yeah. a person. Like this is really, and then I think what was tough was like also coming to the realization of when you had other humans and, and maybe this is just like a breakthrough thing that I needed to get through or you deal with this with your content. I'm actually super interested, but like when you would see people come to their defense, I was just like, wow, like it really is. <laughs> sure a fucked up world. Like, uh, uh, like a great example was just talking about the Vitaly stuff and doing the Predator stuff. And I, and, and like, hey. Uh, I was, I had that on my notes actually, which I like to tangent. So I've looked at like three notes. But that was <laughs> on my list. My list was, I wanted to ask you about T Vitaly being a pedo hunter and how you felt Dude, about that. Dude, I, I think the idea in theory is great. I, I don't think any of these kids have watched that viral clip that uh, Donut and I shared on Twitter where it took less than two seconds for that predator to pull out a gun and those trained police officers who organized the sting on this child molester, you know, killed him there on the spot. I don't know if you've seen yeah. that clip where they're at the hotel. I love that clip. Yeah. 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 Beautiful clip. Like, yeah. I wish, I wish they all ended that way. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 Beautiful fucking clip. Absolutely poetic moment. The reality is that took a lot of effort to do that. That was them yes. staging that. That was them getting prepared for that. That was a team trained for that. And yeah. all I tried to say and articulate talking about the Vitaly stuff is, I think in theory, it's a good idea. I think what they're doing is is good to raise this awareness. I don't necessarily think it's a thing that should be encouraged to be streamed because I see potentially big red flags. And we already seen it. The guy that got knocked out last week. Copycats. Kids are going to try to start doing it. That guy that got knocked out. The guy that knocked that guy out. The reason nobody chased him was he had a gun. He was a thug. He didn't care. Mm -hmm. You're doing all this flash stuff on the street. You're live streaming it to tens of thousands of people. Something you're just putting yourself out there. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. And that's my only it's worry. A, and it's, it's not inevitable. that. It, and it's good to point out. It's not that a child molester maybe doesn't deserve to get killed. But the only bad thing is when you get involved with this, that's how people get away. And that's what pisses me off. The reality yeah. is if all that recent clip where he got knocked out, if that actually goes to the court in the state of California, well, that guy just walked free because the guy assaulted him. Because these, you know, these streamers, they're not cops. The security there is to, the security guard is there to protect Vitaly. So now this is an instant where they could have taken it. And I know there's a bureaucratic system or whatever that, fucking doesn't help out especially out in cali but having it resort to that just helps those fucking criminals more in my opinion i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe there will be some just cause but i don't see it happening you know yeah i struggle with it because you know it's it's a it's about as easy as a thing for everyone to agree on as there is right it's like yeah. oh, we all Disgusting want to people. see you know these anyone who would prey on a child most sane humans have no problem seeing them face swift justice whatever that looks like um so so there's that element in, in this and the reason i hate it and is because vitaly what i know about vitaly is someone who's one of the biggest ogs on youtube is yeah. the original prankster grinder yeah. the only thing that he cares about is how can he maximize views and emotional reactions to benefit him the, the most he i don't even think there's maybe a bone and he, he probably convinces himself that he's doing something righteous and good but i think that he doesn't really care at the end of the day about 
you think so? More I, or one less predator on the street. I was I, curious I about that. That's what I. That's what I, I asked. Generally, yeah. Don't. Like these guys, like they only care about content. That's all. Like, you know, so. I, you know, it's probably easy for him to justify it. And like that, that anytime I see these vigilante pedo hunters that are like unqualified to be doing what they're doing, it's like, you know, there is there is this element of like, all right, well, if we they expose like the one he did with Bradley Martin, where it's he exposed the, this yeah, the this movie producer, guy. this old producer that was, you know, made some big movies in the nineties. Uh net result. This guy got exposed, and now he's going to face the backlash and consequences of that. I don't know if there's like even cops involved. He just like walks away, and that's it. And then Vitaly's yeah. on to the next one. Like, what the fuck does he? Yeah, that's even that's face the, consequences. Yeah. I remember I, I was like know. literally asking that, and like everybody was just trying to articulate and justify. Well, at least it was brought to attention. I'm like, yeah, but you realize, yeah. like, right now you're sitting in your house, and that guy is still out there. And somebody also brought up a good point. Is like, you know. No, no justice happens, and now these guys just become extra cautious and know how to avoid They're the setups. Change, it's like there's, man. yeah, yeah there, there's. I mean, and and that's my whole argument with the idea is like, we're not talking about people that are accidentally finding out that they're criminals. Sexual predators know that they're evil people. They know it. They know they're doing wrong. They're. Yeah. It, it's only a matter of time of doing this until you come across that one that is just so far gone that they don't care, that they're just. And then, and then that's when we end up seeing somebody get killed on a live stream, and people have to go through seeing that. And again, it's yeah, we could argue that when that if that moment was to happen, we would probably like to see it if it is a sexual predator. There's some, you know, we all liked that clip on Twitter. I'm not gonna even pretend I didn't. We. But it's it's just like I don't know. So much red tape with streaming. It's it's just such an interesting topic. There's no real right answer. And, no, I agree. Yeah. I, I I don't. I, I can't land on a specific moral take on it because, like yeah. I said, you know, if the if there is a situation where the net result is this guy at least has exposed and he's embarrassing his community and everyone that knows him, he's gone viral and now he's pinged as like this pedo. Like that's probably a net good. But the flip side of that is like. I don't know that Vitaly specifically his intentions are Bingo. good, and even if even if they are, I don't like. What does that say about us? It's like we're we're taking the worst parts of humanity and monetizing them and turning them into entertainment, which is no different than I guess what we've been doing forever with the OJ court case and all of these things. Like, and we're only like and we're only weird human condition. Like we're obsessed with the worst parts of humanity, and we monetize them and turn them into entertainment. And, and we're only getting weird, but... we're only getting the creator's word, like that this yeah, did something. Well, yeah, that's that's. And it's, I think that's like the frustrating thing is like there's no actual proof that this helped, and, and it's articulated and defended as you you shouldn't talk bad or criticize this idea because. They're doing absolute good, and it's like you want to think so, and I and I do. I really do want to think so. I'd like, yeah, yeah, sure. But we don't have any physical proof that it did help. I mean, definitely raising awareness. It's definitely, I mean, the fact that he can go on a fucking what ten stream streak and catch like five predators every single time that are they they're they're vetted. They're like they have a whole team that are like setting up sexual chats with on dating sites with these people yeah. that are clearly setting them up. I don't think there's any false setup, so there's credit definitely to give there. That's definitely sure. agreeable. Yep. But, um, yep. you know, even in one of the things, they they tried to get one guy, um, they tried to bring him to the department, and the DA straight up said, like, we don't prosecute people like this. And they're like, you know, that clip probably has more merit than half of the predators caught. If you think about it, like that is probably the yeah. most pivotal thing that more people should see. That clip should be the thing going viral that a California DA said, nope, we won't take this guy in. We don't prosecute people like that. That's the thing that should be blowing up. Not that's shaving the head, weird. not the. Because what? They didn't have enough evidence? Or like I have no, the... I have no idea. That's just, and, and it, well, this is also the other side of things. That's just. What they were saying in the clip, that's what Vitaly and the security guard were saying in the clip is, you know, Which we called the police department, they forwarded us contacts. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, things. exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, there's, and that's, and that's, that's all I was trying to say and articulate when I had the conversation about it. Um, but it, it's, it, of course, you know, especially doing it live and talking about it on video, 
And it's such a sensitive subject, even questioning yeah. the narrative and direction. Next thing you know, it's every person's like, oh, so you're a pedo supporter? I'm like, Jesus Christ, you really are no, for just sake. a fucking wall head butter, aren't you? Jesus. Yeah, um, I mean, people, yeah. So, people and are take, so black take and in mind, white, we're, they're so black and white. Like, there can be a nuanced take. Like, I'm not saying I don't agree that pedos should be taken off the street, but maybe there's better ways of going about it. But at the same time, like, Maybe there's not. I don't know. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it could be yeah. a net good, but like, it would be it would be ignorant not to at least question it. Expect and like for me, is someone who is very familiar with Vitaly over the last decade is one of the reasons I question him specifically so much because he's never had good attention. I mean, the dude. It, don't don't get me wrong. He he works hard, but he just seems like a shit human for the most part. From my yeah, I know about him. I don't know too. I don't know too much about him and Fousey, for example, because oh, yeah, of their the OGs, man. That's yeah, like, that, but that's all I know of them, that they're the OGs. Yeah. And I just knew fucking 10 years ago that I, I didn't get into their content, but I knew they were popular. And that's all yeah. I know of them today. And it's like, you know, it's always a, a, an interesting subject because you never want to come off as like, you're just saying something to shit on their content. But it's just like, I don't, I don't get it. I, you know, yeah. I, I don't understand, I don't know them, so I can't tell you their values and whatnot. So it's always a gray area, you know? Yeah. Well, we'll see how it unfolds. Um, what's your, what, what are your, how do you think it's going to go? Well, I was just going to say, I'm low key excited for when someone eventually dies on live stream. On kick. <laughs> I know it's going to happen. Yeah. I can't fucking wait. I thought I'm it was going to be, be the night that guy got hit. I thought he was going to die for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't be surprised. That was a nasty hit. Uh, it's so far i'm gonna be i'm gonna be so desensitized by that point because i see so many people get killed on x every day anyways just like against yeah. my will it's just like oh here's another video of someone getting fucking we, popped we were literally in that stream where that uh, an individual even brought that up we're literally going <laughs> over the body cam footage of <laughs> the guy getting popped that was there to yeah. meet the 15 year olds and my chat yeah. spamming w's spamming yes. 1776 american flag <laughs> emo <laughs> patriot <laughs> shit all through my chat and we're like, God damn. We watched it like three times. And then like literally the second, I'm like, yeah, I just don't think Vitaly has like that much setup in case something goes off. Oh, my God. So you're a pedo defender. No, out there. well, here's the deal. Like, I mean, even back even back to the Chris Hansen days, like they, you know, they had the chat logs. And then if they let him leave and the cops were there to arrest. Right. That's and what, then yeah, that's eventually, so I believe one of the reasons that show stopped is because they did the normal thing where they caught this guy and they were going to let him and instead of whatever him sitting down, he just took a gun and shot himself in the head. Like while they were streaming and that were like, all right, maybe we should stop doing this. now. Oh my God. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that would like, and Chris, so, so this content model wow. of catching a predator has been around forever. I, I knew and, of that, but I never watched it. Yeah, no, this was hugely popular back in there. It was like network television. Wow. Catching a predator, and they come out, and you make jokes, and he's sitting there reading the chat logs to them. He goes, "Why don't you sit down over there?" That was like his famous line, like, "Why don't you sit down?" <laughs> and it's like, it says here you were going to get a six pack of Zima in a box of condoms, but you knew you were coming to meet with a fifteen year old. Tell me about that. Oh, and they talk God. back and forth, and it'd be, and eventually he'd be like, "Yeah, you can leave if you want." And the guy would leave, and then the cops. There'd be a dramatic arrest where the cops would sprint in from off camera and fucking tackle him to the ground. Okay, definitely. You know, like yeah. So 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 there was that ending, that closure, and now it's just like this. You know, this vigilante streamer uh, pedo hunting is just uh, a different yeah, like, piece. But yes, that's someone will eventually die. We'll we, see we what were, happens. Kick will have to revise their policies or something. Yeah, and, and that and that that was like my whole question is like I. We were watching these clips, and there's like literally multiple where he's like, "Whatever, we can't do anything about this. Let's just go get the next guy." And they're just like walking back into their house. That's what. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, we got him. We can't do anything. He like hits him with a fucking he, like pops a paint gun on him. He like <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like does he like shoots him with this like uh, yeah. I don't even know what you call it. It's like yeah. a, it's like a gender reveal fucking can. Yeah. He shoots him with like blue confetti thing. Yeah, confetti or something. And then he's like, oh, we're on to the next one. Yeah. Thanks for watching my stream. Make sure you fucking donate, subscribe. I'm I like, can't. What fucking what twisted reality do I live in? But at the same time, like, listen, if you could somehow strike a deal. With like some sort of law enforcement or some old school like 1776 legislation 
where like you could do these streams and if you caught them and had ad adequate proof and chat logs, oh, you could then fuck. take them to the, t you could then take them to the town square and throw them in a wood chipper on live oh, stream. Fuck yeah. I would be, be, I would be behind that. Yeah. I, that, <laughs> well, that fun. was my only thing. I, I was like, man, these, these would be so much better if we like <laughs> knew that it was, yeah, something was happening. I, th I believe at one point I even, I, I, my, my suggestion was like, if they could take them and bring them into the, the middle of the, the city and just hang them by their nutsack in front of everybody and they can like beat them like a pinata, that would be like, like that. there would be a fulfillment from it. But we're just watching them kind of go on to the next for, yeah, right. the, the viewership. Just, but we're getting blue balled. Yeah, at least let me have a nod at the end of it. Fucking, <laughs> so what, uh, So in, in regards to that clip that we were talking about, I won't tell you who. I know some people that were close to the situation. I got a, I got a, I I saw a photo, uh, a crime scene photo after, uh, from the pedo that got fucking cooked by the cops, and they shredded his shit. Oh, his, oh, the oh. the actual like the actual like the, an the actual the, photo from yeah. after the fact, like when the coroner got there and they were doing the thing. Wow. There was a picture, dude. Oh yeah, like, it was I don't, what twenty. What, what I, dude, twenty shots. Whatever or it was, his shit was gone. He was. Oh, yeah. He was a fully. He was just a fully post op female <laughs> oh yeah and and, and you're, you're talking up. about the one that we've seen on twitter and uh, we shared that one is that one, the one you're talking about that's i think so yeah the one yeah. where he like they he fucking pulled a gun and the cop yeah. shot him like 15 times dude. or whatever yeah dude and, yeah. and like we broke that down on stream we couldn't even get to yeah. two mississippi and that gun was already out that's mm -hmm. like such a, a and you find out that that guy's former high military and he was in a situation if those were actual like if that guy was they on were kick the, streamers, <laughs> if yeah. That, yeah, if that guy was on a, a kick stream, somebody's dead. Because yeah, he's yeah. oh yeah, he's just at wit's end. He's already been he nothing you know to lose he was at that he, point, he, these guys. Yep, he was already caught multiple times. He's already been busted. He's at yeah. you know his wit's end. He doesn't care. He's a sick. He's a sick individual. It's a, that's what all these individuals are. They're predators. They're catching yes. predators, not people that just kind of fucked up a little bit. And they're making a goof out of them, like actual yeah, predators. Laid on their taxes, you know? Yeah. They, like one <laughs> of the one last ones, like the guy was an illegal immigrant from Mexico and had a fucking eight ball on him. Like, mm. it or, or heroin or some or meth or something, some drug, probably going to do something bad with <laughs> something the kid. Something delicious. Yeah. yeah it's something just, delicious for a 14-year-old girl. Jesus Christ. And it's <laughs> like, hell. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it's, maybe that is part of like why I don't like it. Maybe it's because... A, a, a darker side of me is like, what? Like, just fucking put them down if you're going to make the content. Like, yeah, do something. It's such a <laughs> like, it sucks. Like, from a human humane standpoint, that's a fucked up thing to say. But there is this weird, uh, not weird. I think there's just a general agreement. Like when you are preying on the most innocent people in our society, which is children, young kids. Like, the rules don't apply to you no. anymore. Oh my god. Me. Yeah, they just don't. I mean, there's just nothing. I think that's a very simple nothing, line that we can agree more evil on. to me. Yeah, I, I I agree. Listen, I want to real quick before we wrap up. Shift yeah. gears. You've been an absolute sweetheart. We've been doing this for a while. I know it's your bedtime soon, but I want <laughs> I wanted to ask you because um, you are gonna be a dad soon. Yes. Yes, sir. How's that? How you? How's that going? Are you? Uh, are you pumped? Are you excited? Are you scared? Oh What's yeah. Going on? I'm. I. I am life excited and that's why it's got me you know especially with content and everything that i do you know mm. ex everything we just talked about with the trying the reactionary stuff uh it's just got me really making sure i i try to do things right obviously in this yeah. industry it's it's hard to articulate that but it's yeah. it's it's definitely changed perspective you know it's we weren't playing what like We've been wanting it for a long time, but we were kind of under the impression that we couldn't. And okay. uh, so it just kind of did happen out of nowhere. So uh -huh. it's like, you know, the the things, it's weird. Kids not even here. It's like the things you just think about is just like, you know, it's like watching those clips we just talked about. It's a different perspective now, and he's not even fucking born yet. It's, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's it's a year ago, my life was like, Fuck yeah, stream, make a, a shit ton of money, you know, drive my fast car. And last week I traded in for, you know, I traded in both my vehicles for one. For the you, minivan. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the TRX <laughs> minivan. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, I, but the thing is, it's like, I'm excited that I feel this way. You know what I mean? Like, 
yeah, yeah, I don't. I'm not miserable. I'm happy that we're doing it at a point in our life that <clears throat> little dude can come here and we can fucking grow with him. You know what I mean? We can bring him into this world and and happily raise him and not be young, dumb kids and have to fucking blame him on anything. And I want him to just have a good life. So it's just, it's fun. It's, it, it's exciting. You know? Yeah. You're in for a treat, man. It's, yeah. it's what, like it, it, it makes it for, for what it's worth. It, uh, it makes you reprioritize certain things. Like, uh, obviously some things will continue along the same path, but, um, for me, it was really just a, a wonderful new perspective, a new lease on life in a lot of ways where, I think it's healthy to um, be forced to no longer put yourself first in every situation. And obviously when you're in a relationship and you're married, like there's an element of having to give and take, right? But it's a lot different when there's a helpless, you know, little human being that requires you to keep it alive for some yeah. years. And then yeah. and be once it can kind of keep itself alive, then you have to instill appreciable values that uh, help them become uh, a commendable young man or woman and all these things. It's, but it's the, it's, uh, it really has been the best, uh, the best blessing and honor in the world, raising a kid. And it's like, you can keep doing what you're doing. And it's just like, and it sounds like you have a good team with your wife at home. Uh, that's going to be awesome, man. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to, See little pictures, a little one when he comes. Absolutely, oh, dude, I got you. That's what I was going to ask you. Is like, you know, we never really talked about in that in in Texas. You know, we more so. You gave me the good, solid like advice of you know how how much you appreciate it. How how did you feel leading up to it? Because you said you were doing content, you know, prior, yeah. and it sounded like you were during pretty pivotable <laughs> stage, which is like, you know, yeah. I'm like I'm I'm like you know mine. I feel like I'm on my like breakthrough potential journey. You know, this is the year where I had some millions of views stuff and I've gotten a lot of gas and it's like, it's, it's interesting. Cause like, I, I didn't get to ask you like, how, how did you conceptualize things? Like what, where was your head? Well, it's interesting because I think you can, it's, uh, and one, in one side of the coin, you are being thrown into this thing that's going to take up so much of your time. Right. And that's scary as someone who needs time to do this thing that you're trying to, you know, create a career online, which is, you know, fast paced and pieces are moving all over the place. And it's like now you have this new element in your life that is going to really require resources and energy. But the flip side of that coin is that there's this new untapped motivation that you didn't even know That's was inside of you. Yep. Right. To that that now you got a little you got a little man or a little girl yep. that that you want to grow up and have as someone that can respect you and that they know. So it's like it, it was it was interesting. Like when I when my wife was pregnant with Jackson before I was still working in the restaurant and you know I was YouTube was making me a little bit of money, you know, a little bit of scratch on the side. And I had been doing it for a couple of years at this time, just uploading consistently, working, grinding, seeing a little bit of growth. And then 2018 was a crazy year, man, because like I had spoken earlier uh, tonight, um, I had my, my, I had my son in August of 2018. So I was still working in the restaurant. I had a month of um, paternity leave. So I was home from, August through a lot of September and then October when my son was less than a month old is when my first video, big video went the viral and started okay. to go crazy. And then the second one went crazy and all this. So this is going crazy. My maternity leave is up. So I go back to work at the restaurant oh. for, for like two months and you're it, questioning it was, so it, much. It, it was a fucking whirlwind because I have this new one, two month old at home I'm back at work and all of a sudden my online life after all these years of, you know, grinding and whatever, like it's like I'm having this moment and I'm like, whoa, like this is so I, I'm like, I'm like waiting tables. I'm, we'll be like a busy night and I'm just like pulling my phone out like what is happening right now, right? <laughs> That's so like, interesting. So, wow. Yeah, it was crazy. So and then, you know, I went back September and then a month after I was back, I was like, I I went home to my wife and, you know, that 
it's difficult to go home and be like, honey, I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave my job. Even We just had a kid a month ago and I'm going to fucking leave my job. It was, a, it was a fine dining steakhouse. I was bartending. I was serving. It was a good, good job. I'd been in the industry for a lot of years. It was good money for that industry. And she was like, you know what? I trust you. All right. Whatever. W-Y. And it yep. was, a, you know, leading up to that, the month, the year to two leading up to that, there was a lot of like me giving up shifts when I could because I wanted to be home to work on the business and make content. And like, she was very like, she was kind of like side eyeing me a lot. And she's like, well, you only worked three to four days this week. It's like, <laughs> give up a shift. And I'm like, I'm like, honey, I promise. Like, I'm, it'll be worth trust it. Trust me. Like, no, I yeah. think there's something, I think there's something here, you know? Yeah. Like, I really think there's something here. And to her credit, like, even with the side eye, she always trusted me. Like, yeah. she never, yeah. you know, she was like, okay, if you yeah. say so. And then finally, like after that month hit that October, and I was like, I was like, honey, check this out. She's like, okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, all right, there's something there. I, there's something there. You can uh, you can leave your job. So ever since then, it's just been this, you know, the roller coaster of up down up months and down months. But all yeah. the, the kid that then a month later going to the Mr. Beast thing, like that was what a fucking pivotal year that was oh for me. Oh my god, yeah. Um and ever since then, it's just been like, yeah, man, how can, you know, how can we keep this going? You know, like the, anytime you have a huge blow up, it only lasts so long until you Bingo. find a new normal. Bingo. And then, yeah. you know, people come and there's tourists that come and go and there's people that stick around for a while. And there's so many variables. But at the end of the day, it's always like, man, what a blessing it is to have this kid that I can raise and um, I can work from home. And I've just been so thankful to be as, as stressful as it can be sometimes to be able to work from, you know, my house originally and now my garage across the driveway where it's like, I can just go see him anytime and I'm present and I'm around. It's just, uh, I mean, that's it's a awesome. blessing. So you got, uh, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna be great, man. And it, there'll be some stressful parts, but you're gonna, that's, I can't wait to ask you in a year. I'll that's, have you back that, on. Well, and, that's why I wanted to ask you that. Cause you know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, and, and, and this is the thing that makes, you know, what we do so fun, especially meeting on like X and getting together at events and kind of like isolating into some individuals where you're like, man, I really resonate a few things. I was like, I, I, I almost pegged you as like the same feeling, uh, the same individual, like when, when you found out and, and everything, like what changed in you. And I remember just for like the longest time I had as, as somebody that tries to give a lot of advice to creators, I, you know, constantly get the, the kid thing thrown into the mix and you know I, you know i definitely didn't have uh, uh the the most normal background uh kids have had to been part of my life growing up uh you know siblings um sure. you know we didn't have different parent situations very weird scenarios dynamics you know there's times that at young ages in my life where i had to be a very mature person and i sure I, i've been around kids my entire life through you know my own siblings and you know nieces and nephews and some of them being in different situations and whatnot. So mm -hmm. never had my own. So I obviously know that when at a certain point, when you can put a kid back, it's definitely different, but I'm not ignorant. I'm not ignorant to what that quality of life was. And, you know, when we always have these conversations, you know, uh, one of the biggest things that I always love that people really do credit me for is like my work ethic, um, mm -hmm. which I, you know, really got from my uh, adopted father. You know, that was something that just resonated with me so fucking much. So I take a lot of pride in that. And I always yeah. had these conversations and I'm like, you know, obviously I don't know what's going to happen when the kid's here, but I can tell you right now, if I work this hard now, boy, you give me a reason outside of myself and Megan to work hard. Oh my God. Like what is the potential? Mm -hmm. And it's maybe it's nuclear fission. Dude, maybe. It's like <laughs> yeah. a lot of people I've been asking and it's like, maybe it's cynical, but I'm just like, dude, there's a whole new you know, level of just like, I'm going to make my shit fucking work. And in some yeah. aspect of the sense, like, I don't even care. Right. It's not even, it's not even, so you think I'm cool, you know, cleaning up the channel and, and going down the direction where I'm like, look, I can fucking farm this content. I, this is where I can stabilize. I can make skits around this. I can make like, if I have better odds of making viral stuff, it's going to be in this area. And uh, I could probably monetize it best. Everything is just, switched and it's just like i'm so excited for him to actually be here so it's even more like every day i get to see this actual thing where i'm just like don't matter like you don't want to go get that morning lift in and feel better 
probably should really reconsider that because you got a living <laughs> yeah. thing. Like that's another thing. Um, you know, getting all the blood work since we've gotten back from Texas, I'm 10 pounds down. I'm about to start my TRT uh, yes, next sir. next week. Uh, pretty Let's excited go. about that. And I've just been all about like, dude, the, the biggest thing that scared me is I'm 34 and I'm like all, already like, dude, when my son's my age, I'm going to be 68. Mm -hmm. Fuck, dude. Like, I better I start. Was 33. I was 33 when I had Jackson. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I better start getting in shape now because I want to be the saying. healthiest 68-year-old because – I want to be able to do things with my kid. I want to be yeah, able yeah. to fucking live my life with my child. And I want my, yep. my biggest goal for me is I want my kids when they're adults to want to hang out with me. I want to be, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to articulate that, but that's just all I want out of life right there. Yeah. I, 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 I would agree that that's, that's the ultimate goal. And I, I have a wonderful relationship with my parents and I think that, there, you know, I'll kind of leave it with this, but I think there's two ways that that happens. And I think, again, this is just my opinion. I think that that is f finding the balance of knowing when you have to be the parent, but also being their best, being a great friend. Like there, yeah. there, you can't just be the friend all the okay. time to your kid. You have to be the parent that's setting the boundaries and telling them no okay. and being, being difficult to them when you know it's the right thing to do. Um, as tough as it probably is, yeah. As tough as it probably is, and I know, and you know, I I say this as someone who's the parent of a of a five and a half, six year old. Like they go through their phases. I know it's going to get worse when he becomes nine, ten, eleven, a teenager. It's thinks he can kick your ass, and yeah, harder and harder. <laughs> but like, I I really am confident, and I you know, I hope and I pray that I can keep that dynamic where it's like, it's it's a it's a respect, it's a patience, and it's and it's an un yielding in unconditional love coupled with a toughness when it needs to be tough. And I think, you know, and that's the relationship I have with my parents is so wonderful because, you know, they, they gave me that freedom and the decency to kind of spread my wings and be who I was, but they also guided me and they were tough right. when they needed to be. And, you know, I see some, I, I grew up around some, I was homeschooled for a lot of my life and I grew up oh, yeah. around some other yeah. homeschool families and had knew some people and that were in families where the parents were much more draconian. It was always, it was always toughness and it was very, it was very rooted in religion. And I understand there's a lot of dynamics that can go into this, but there was, it seemed, it was always the toughness and there was none of the, the friendship in the, in the, in the meet in the middle and the leeway in some of those relationships just never recovered for some yeah. of these people. And it's like, it can be, uh, yeah, it can be difficult. So I'm, I'm blessed. I think I had a great example and I, and I, I think, I hope I pray I, I, I do a good job. And, um, but parenting is one of those things where it's like, there's no, there's no one size fits all. There's no perfect no. way to do it. Yeah. Um, it just, I think it, it's just unconditional love being present, being there, being around and just, you know, not, <clears throat> I, I think not letting, I, I mean, having a set of values that you that you that you think are important to yourself. They don't have to be rooted in religion, but just things that you think are the best qualities that make an adult human. You know, yeah. patience, respect, empathy, okay. all of these things that, like, when you meet someone that you, as an adult, really resonate with. Like, what are the qualities that that person has that I really admire, and how can I? not only adopt those qualities myself, but then instill those in my child. And what does that take? And it's, it's such a wonderful, wonderful journey. Damn. I think you're going to do great, dude. I'm excited for you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. I think, I think one of the more prouder things too, is like the amount of that compliment, you know, obviously the kid's not here yet, but I think, you know, that's just such an instilling thing of just the amount of people that have already like, you know, just getting to know you, like you're going to do a great job. You're going to do a great job. Just you already makes you so proud. You know what I mean? It just gives you a, a little <laughs> yeah. bit of confidence until yeah, they're here well, screaming friends, their head off. Always and, yeah. gonna say that. So yeah, I'll yeah, give yeah, you yeah. The, I'll give you the tough love, which is Biggie. Don't fuck it up, bro. Okay. <laughs> oh God. I, I, you, uh, yeah. I don't hope not. Fuck it up. Bro. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking with it. But listen, dude. Was, uh, shit, we've been on. We've been chopping up for two hours, man. I've, been, yeah. I've had an absolute blast, and I really appreciate you coming on here. Dude, Biggie for me. on most socials, I imagine. X, YouTube, Kick. Yeah, th that's the. I mean, if if it's not like Big E, it's like just my website biggie.co like i just do the at name biggie.co anyway so it's yes, but most of them yeah you can just search biggie and i'll show up in the results 
uh, aside Love from the it. wrestler. So, but yeah, Dude, I appreciate you having <laughs> yeah. me, man. Not to be confused with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I know we look a little similar, but it's uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely different. Right on, brother. Well, I appreciate you. I look forward to seeing what you come up with the next couple of years Dude. and uh, seeing what your little the little man, little girl looks like, brother. Appreciate that, man. Thanks for having me. All right, buddy.